He ain't here. So the quick run down the paw, right? He's one of the, despite the fact that he's a sway character, when people uh, have asked me in the past, like, oh, what are the characters you recommend to new people? I still recommend Paul, right? Number one, it's nice to, like, learn a Sway character, even if you don't want to. It's nice to have one in your pocket, in my opinion, because you never know. They'll force you to learn a clean backdash cancel. Not that my backdash cancel is the cleanest. You can see I'm, like, fucking it up sometimes. I gotta get, I gotta do, like, a couple of reps, you know, before I get consistent with it. But still. Paul has the most obvious in the world up close mid and low mix up in the game. Everyone knows what it is. If you've seen any sort of competitive tech and play with Paul, even if you haven't seen competitive tech and play, you know what the Paul mix up is. It's Death Fist for mid up close, and it's Demolition Man, Devil Man for short, as the low option up close, right? What's up, Naughty Senpai? Hey, you guys, let me know if the audio levels between the music and my voice is fucked up, alright? Because last time with my Leo stuff, the music was a little too loud. Even though I don't change my volume settings, I notice that, you know, I fuck up sometimes. Anyway. So, you know up front, and it's not hard to execute. Phoenix Master is like a fireball, you know, you've played Street Fighter. And then when you're up close, it's 60 damage if you get the clean hit in the blue text there. If you're not close, you get 40 damage, uh, which is not a clean hit. The trade-off is, if you're not in the clean hit range, it's safer because of pushback. It's harder to punish, but when you are in clean hit range, everyone is going to be able to launch punish it. That's first of all. Second of all, it's a high-risk mix-up in general, but Demolition Man is the low option. Used to be way harder to execute, right? You used to have, kind of have to have a rhythm. You still got to have a rhythm to executing it. Ba, ba, ba. You still need that rhythm, but it's way more lenient than it used to be. I feel like in Tekken 6 and shit, and Tekken Tag 2, you have to be really on point to get that third hit. And you don't need the blue sparks. The blue sparks used to add more damage. In this game, as you see, it only adds one damage. 41 damage instead of 40. So... Really easy. You can even mash it out, it looks like now. Yeah, you can mash it out. Before, you couldn't mash it out. Now, you can mash it out. That's good. I like that, personally. So, that makes Paul an easy, like, recommendation for a new character. And, like, you know, some people like to say that Death Fist is overpowered. He goes, oh my god, 60 damage. Let me tell you something. That up close with the 60 damage is easily launch punishable. Look at what he gets off of a safe mid. The same damage. Granted, that mid will not launch your normal hit if you're crouching, but hey, you want to do a little risky and you want to launch a croucher, negative 13 instead of launch punishable. How much damage does he get? Oops. How much damage does he get off a hop kick with the easiest juggle in the world? 60 damage. So, you know, while Death Fist is the obvious, like, you know, up close mix, you can still do hop kick and get the same damage as your mid option, right? And of course, you can get a little harder for more damage. I don't even think this does more damage. Look, it doesn't even do, that's way harder to do. It doesn't do more damage. What's the, what's the other one? All that, 56 damage. Why do that when you could just... 60 damage. Another great reason to play Paul. Help. Let me see something. 55 damage. You get the idea, right? And then he has this too. Is this a combo? Okay, that is a combo. 84 damage. I think that's the only way he gets more damage without doing the... Oops, I fucked up. 84 damage, right? 82. Okay, so that's the only instance where you have to do the harder juggle to get a little more damage. Still, you don't sacrifice much damage by doing the piss easy combo with Paul, so... Once again, another good reason to recognize a new character. What do I think Paul's downsides are before I actually go into his move list? Well, number one. He does not have a 13 frame mid poke. His fastest poke, poke, mid poke is uh, 14 frames and using it like a good poke requires a sidestep cancel. And that's down forward one. The thing is, down, as uh, there's a new way to use it effectively, which is to say down forward one is built into a string that's all safe on block. Down forward one, one, two. So you can do a lot of this, you know? And then when people attack, you let the whole thing rock, and the whole thing is still safe on block, right? The thing is, there's a there's a, a bunch of deterrents to stop people from poking you out of that. Stuff like this, this, 
this. It's the fact that when he do down forward one into back, he does the sway back and his sway options, he's plus on block. Not frame trap wise, but he is plus on block. I'll get more into that when I get to that move. But you have to kind of learn how to do this. I haven't even done this yet myself, but yeah, you have to be good at doing a really fast sidestep cancel like that. You can do a bunch in a row, but that's down forward one back up to go into another one. You need to, it's, that's like a big part of making that more effective. And I'll get, like I said, I'll get more into that when I actually get to that in the move list. But that makes it really weird to poke with Paul. At least it's made it weird for me, right? Not have, lacking a 13 frame mid poke is a big deal. He does have a 12 frame mid, uh, not that, shoulder, but that's not a poke. You guys following along? I think back 2-1 after Screw does more damage than the clean Death Fist. The second hit isn't guaranteed, Willem. That's a Oki. Anyway, back to the matter at hand. You mean Sway Cancel? Yes, I do mean Sway Cancel. Oh. Okay, I didn't know about that. Go figure. That was my assumption, I guess. Whatever, I'll get more into it when I get there. So now that we got all that out of the way, uh, like I said, number one big biggest weakness is his lack of a 13 frame mid poke. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it's there. Uh, another big weakness I feel like for Paul is um, he's super punishable against good players. All of his good moves are really punishable. That's punishable. That's not super punishable, but that's punishable on block. Obviously, uh, that uh, that shit is punishable. Obviously, death miss is punishable. You get what I'm saying? You have to take risks with Paul. You have to put yourself in danger, all right? So now that we got that out of the way, now I'm gonna bring up the this. Yeah, I know one is charged, but it's not guaranteed. Well, um, you're talking about he's talking about this. He's talking about that's not guaranteed. People can hold back, and then you're just plus on block. That's what makes that setup good. Um, anyway. So, starting from the top. One jab, like usual. Plus one on block. Ten frame jab. Uh, what does he say? I can't react to any low launcher, but even I can parry his full cost down forward. Yeah, that's supposed to be seeable. This is supposed to be seeable. You know what's not supposed to be seeable? Demolition, man. That's a 15 frame low. That's not seeable. That's what makes it dangerous. All of a sudden, I can't do the third hit. You see? Yeah, mash it. <laughs> Demolition Man is a 15 frame low. You see the second bot up there? Low 15 next to the low. 15? 15 frames. Anyway. So, anyway, one like usual. One jab. 10 frames, start up. Plus one on block, plus eight on hit. Nothing special. And then we got one two. Paul used to have one of the scariest one twos in the game when he when there were eight frame jabs in uh in Tekken 5.0 DR and Tekken 4 and shit. Now it's just a typical one two like everybody else is. It's negative one on block, plus six on hits. Nothing special. I believe this might be his standard uh, ten frame punisher. Also, I don't think he has anything special. Oh yeah, one two three is his actual ten frame punisher, and that's the next three. One two three high high mid. It is super unsafe on block. It's the start of his okay. It is the start of his uh, 10 hit, which means the frame data is absolutely garbage. But if you want a round ender and the opponent puts himself at, puts himself at negative 10, this is good damage, 26 damage. Don't use it otherwise. This is negative 14 on hit, as you can see second boss say up top. That's why you have to go and follow up the 10 hit. So don't really, I wouldn't recommend using that outside of like a round ender. Stick with one, two. 1-4 is one of those where, uh, it's one of those things, a lot of characters have, maybe not a lot, but about a, a handful of characters have this, like a jab into a low, and, uh, it's, it's more like Miguel's than it is Katarina. Katarina has something like this where she jabs to a low, like, a, it's also 1-4 for her, but she stays standing. Paul goes into a crouch, like Miguel, um, and then he recovers crouching too, so... He doesn't have a full cross mix up quite like Miguel though, so it's not like as big a deal. But it's there. This is one of those that just kind of makes his jab pressure more buff. Miguel, I feel like, relies more into it to go into mix ups, but I feel like Miguel players kind of gimmick out a bit too much with it. But still, it's something that, that your opponent has to think about every time they block a jab, he might go into that. So just don't abuse it. Unless you're playing ranked and you think your opponent can't see it and fucking abuse it. It's not a natural combo, normal hit. On counter hit, I'm assuming it is. Yes, it is, but it's shit damage. Uh, the low by itself is plus one on hit and only eight damage. 
So if you're too obvious with it, it's, it is risky. Uh, according to the bot here, it's only negative 11 on block, but they're going to low parry. Nobody's going to block that. Maybe me, because I'm an idiot. But um, Next we got is uh, Standing Sue. Let me see if you can sidestep 1-4. I don't think you can, but just in case. Okay, yeah, I didn't think so. Uh, also, let me check one thing. This might be one of those where if the jab hits you, you cannot low parry it. This probably is the case, right? Correct. If the jab hits you, you can block it and get the punish. And if you, otherwise, you <laughs> got there you go. 42 damage. That's hard to do. Alright, let me not get to the combo craze. You get the idea. One four. One of those. Uh, next on the list is standing two. Nothing special. Zero on block instead of uh, minus one, but plus six on hit. So good. I got a zero on block with the test uh, tracking, I guess. And then he has a follow up that's not a natural combo or hit. Two three. He has two follow-ups. Two three combos on counter hit wall splats. Two three is uh, negative twelve on block though. Also, two three has a counter hit juggle starter. So conversions. Let's see. Of course, I go forward one. Yes, the angle's a little weird. How about instant? No, it felt, maybe Kuma. If you could do that, it would be a shitload of damage. Trust me on that one. Instead, you do this. Easy conversion. Easy damage. Seventy four damage. Just because they decide to press something after they block the two. So you get the idea. Next, he has down two, uh, sorry, two down three. Uh, anything special about this? This is negative one on hit, unlike one four. And it's 11 damage instead of what was it, eight damage. Uh, nothing special on counter hit except a little more damage. So, I mean, that's just something there, I guess, if you want to use some sort of weird, like, two jab pressure. Uh, in this case, it's negative 12 on block instead of negative 11, like one four was, right? I think the 2-3 is pretty interesting. It is unsafe, though. He used to have... This used to be a string, right? Oh, it's forward 2, which is a different move. Okay. I thought it was... All right. All right. Got it. We'll get there. So this is a standing 2-3. Forward 2 is a different move that looks the same. Look at the whips. That's a 2. It looks like a regular 2 jab. Forward 2. It's this weird hook. All right. Next... Standing three. Um, let me check. Tracking on two, three. Yeah, so there's no sidestepping it. They got a block. Yeah, it doesn't jail, I imagine. Crouch. Okay, yeah, good. It doesn't jail. So that means they can mash it between, the, in between it. So if you pressure with a two jab for some reason, can you delay it? No delay. No delay on either. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now the option could be sidestep. Excuse me. All right. Next, three standing three. You might be familiar with this if you fought against law players because he has a follow up standing three two. Uh, the startup on standing three. By the way, startup on standing two is ten frames. Okay, good. Uh, the startup on standing three is. Uh, 15 frames. This is a natural combo, but it can be ducked. So if you're fighting against a Paul player that's abusing this too much, keep in mind you could duck that on block. If you are the Paul player and you notice that they're not uh, ducking on block, fuck them up with it. It's not a bad stirring because on block it's negative three. So this is one of those you gotta duck this shit. Because if you don't duck in this shit, he's negative three and he's pushing you back. You can set up anything. You could sidestep. He's good to go after this shit. You get what I'm saying? So, this is one of those that if you're not ducking, a Paul player could really abuse you with this shit. If you're a Paul player and you're doing the rank gimmicky shit, this is one move to keep in mind. Along with, of course, this one. Um, we'll get there. So, what was it? 31 damage. I don't think... The second hit has counter hit properties, right? And then you pick up with that. And then I think... Well, that's not gonna work. So you, uh, you pick up with forward, forward, four after a counter hits the second hit by itself. 
And they go into a wall standing 3 2, and then death this. Let's keep it simple. See how much damage it does. Dash up. Clean hit death fist. 68 damage. You could get better damage, but if you want an easy placeholder jungle, always, always tailspin as fast as possible. Dash up death fist. That's your, that's your basic ass call juggle. You just want to make sure that post tailspin, you get the tailspin. Because if you don't, the damage, let's see the difference. It's 52, and you don't see the clean hit. Versus 60, right? Dash up, you want the clean hit. To get the damage bonus. Right? So anyway. You guys follow along? Yep, Pauline. What's up, Milo? Alright, so 3-2. It's got some good shit going on. Only negative 3 on block. And 3-2 uh, on hit. It, it's natural combo. Plus 7. So it's got a lot of good shit going on. You got If you're against Paul, once again, duck this fucking move. Keep an eye out for that. Keep it in the back of your mind. Otherwise, you're going to get fucked up. It's a good, it's a good string otherwise. Uh, and I don't think you could sidestep the uh, second hit. Yeah, it looks like he starts the sidestep, then he gets fucked. Oh, oh, go figure. See, I didn't even know this shit. You could sidestep to your right, Paul's left, to get around this move if you're against Paul. Interesting. So there's two ways to punish it. Not that that's the biggest deal in the world because you can just duck it, right? Of course, not a special if the first encounter hits, right? Nope. And then it's just uh, adding damage to the string. Two more damage. Alright. So, next on the list, four. Paul does have a magic four. Negative seven on hit. 12 frame starter for Paul. I don't know what an easy placeholder is if he can't juggle. Death is. Down forward one. Of course, dash dab is gonna work. Damn. That would probably be the easy placeholder. Forward forward two one, preferably the just frame. Yeah, 41 damage. That would be your placeholder until you learn how to actually convert this properly. Which would be like a dash dab and some back and just whatever, right? The thing is, max range, that's gonna be hard to do. That's the thing about Magic 4 conversions. A max range, 4 4 2 1, will probably be a very consistent. Be ready for it. See? I figured as much. Easy, no matter what range. For easy 41 damage. 3 2 is easy, but I bet she, let's see. See, I knew it. That's the problem. And then it doesn't pick up with the juggle. It picks up as a reset if you're slow, which means they can tech out of it. See, up close, it's easy. 3-2. That's, that's good shit up close. Well, I say that and then I drop it. Like, if I'm gonna be up close, I'd rather, you know, jab. Only one less damage than if I didn't include the jab. Then off, then off of a down forward, so I should say. That's what I did when I frame trap before. Yeah, I would recommend just do forward forward 2 1, preferably the just frame version, which is papa, ba, little more damage, and then. Work your way up to getting the juggle conversion off of Magic 4s. Ma almost, almost all Magic 4s are very hard to convert off of for a full juggle. It's rare that a character has a built-in tool to make it easy. Josie Rizal has it with forward 1 plus 2. And Kazumi has it with, what is it, back 1 or whatever the homing move is. Back 2. Back 2 or back 1. Whatever it was. Alright, there it goes. Magic 4. It works like any other Magic 4. Negative 7 on block, plus 7 on hit. I don't know about any tracking on it. Zero on block. Yeah, no tracking on it. At plus one, though. Okay, not even at plus one. At, uh, what was it? That's plus eight. Um, well, that's a homing move, so that's not going to work. Whatever. 
What was the one? He has one that's plus three. There it is. That forces crouch. Yeah, I think as much. Yeah, and that's the thing about Paul. I noticed that he has a lot of plus three on block, but he doesn't have a 13 frame mid poke, so it's like, fuck. <laughs> plus three is great. Plus three is great and all, right, with this move, but, you know. Plus three is great and all, but, you know. Whatever. Anyway, Magic 4 would be a general frame, frame trap in a plus two situation. But no track. Next, forward two, which is, all right, here we go. We start getting into one of these strings that I had not been using. I should have been. They gave Paul this in Tekken six and this string was so fucked up for people that weren't ready for it man this shit you could abuse the fuck out of it forward two three one two three one that so forward two three you cannot really delay at all you have to like do it fast and it's a natural combo forward two three one is not a natural combo i don't even think it is on counter yeah but the last one is super delayable you see how much that Ba 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 Listen to the cadence, because my voice isn't gonna match. It's gonna be all sync. Ba 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 ba. That's how much you can delay that shit. And that last hit, if it's the same as it used to be, gut stun. Now, I'm pretty sure that's a breakable gut stun. Let's see. How much plus on block is it? Plus 19? That's the second. guess. Damn it, that's actually really hard to do. There you go. That combo to look like. Forward four two one guaranteed. Anything else? Death fist, of course, yes. I was trying to do it, but I couldn't. How negative is forward two three? Forward two three is Uh negative eleven. But it's one of those negative elevens that if you were to challenge it, you'd have to worry about the elbow on that, right? So let's find out. Step one, does it, uh, okay, it doesn't jail, right? That's number one. Step two, does it track? It looks like it would, right? It do. Can't challenge it if he does the last hit. But if he does the last hit, you got a block punish. 33 damage. 30 damage. So that's the cool thing about Paul. His block punishment is kind of whatever at 10 frames. But once you hit 12 frames, you get access to two strong 12 frame punishes. Back one, two. And shoulder for mid. Just don't miss the shoulder punch. If they block it, you're going to get fucked up. So basically, shenanigans like uh, back sway 3 2 is better since it's actually hit confirmable 3 2? Oh, I didn't even test the hit confirmable. Wait, are you sure that's hit confirmable? Because I forgot I could delay 3 2. I forgot to test that. Oh shit! Thanks for uh, bringing that up. Stupid me. See, uh, that's what happens when I do this so inconsistently. 3 2 is hit confirmable! But you have to be fucking sharp. Yeah, you have to be like really on point to hit confirm that. Also, um, oh, you talking about core circle back three two? Well, guess what? You just uh help me find out that three two is hit confirmable by saying that anyway. So thanks, Naughty Senpai. You talking about this? Yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah, what are you talking about? Mixing it up with the stun can be killed by holding forward though. You sure about that? 
Because I set him to block. That might be the AI being shitty. Let's see. It's gonna be annoying to record. Oh, that wasn't a combo. I needed a combo. Okay, that's fine. If the elbow hits me, I don't know. Nope, it's uh, not breakable. You sure about that? Alright. No, it's not. Then there... Then, then, then something was timed wrong. This is not a breakable stun. It's not. It's not breakable. Yeah. So, if you, uh, you know, I guess it would be 4-4-2-1, four, four, right? That would be what you would want for a shitload of damage. What was it? 38 plus... Hard to do. Whatever. I got the mid. 60 damage. So it'd be like 64 if you do the just run. Because it's 4 more damage. 38 versus 34, right? Yeah. 4 more damage. It'll be 64 damage. And he could probably get better than that, right? Because this is what? That's 16 frames. Be sick if you get that. Oh. <laughs> Damn, I'm trying to get close to World One. I'm trying to get this. Yes, yeah, even if even if I had it timed better, I don't think it would have reached. You know where that would probably be really fucked up? At the wall. At the wall, he probably gets crazy shit, right? Crazy damage. Especially if uh, Death Fists were involved, right? It would just be like that into two Death Fists. Alright. Uh, I think it goes forward 2 3 1. It's pretty good, but pretty gimmicky, too. Like, people that have been around the block for a while will kill you for doing this because this has been around since Tekken 6. I don't know if they changed it much to the second six, but it's been around for a while, so people know how to deal with this turn. The way being duck. Maybe duck, uh, duck and stand? Because if you duck and you don't press anything, that, you know... That mid will hit you, maybe? I got a feeling you could fuzzy this. Let me see. And if you duck it, you're going to get launched either way, probably, right? As long as you're not mashing, and you just block punish that move, it's not, you know. Also, maybe you can even sidestep that last hit. Let's see. I can test that. Okay, no. Only if he delays it, I'll imagine, I imagine. That's a little delay on that one. Maybe not. <laughs> You'd have to put a lot of delay on it. Yeah. So my recommendation to somebody spamming that is don't try to mash through it. If they're doing this over and over again, you know they're doing it for one reason. It's to set up uh, the last hit. Maybe you could do this. All 
right, I'm trying to back sweep up through it. And I can't armor through it either. So he definitely can't armor through it, but if he delays it... You get that, but... Ah, that's super risky. That's still mashing through it. If he doesn't delay you, he's gonna get the counter hit. Before your armor starts up. So I wouldn't recommend it. This song's really familiar. Uh, the playlist has been all Final Fantasy XIV music so far. Uh, but today his stupid mid-hug is launched punishable. Yeah, unless he does the built-on follow-ups, then you have to punish it kind of differently. Yeah, the mid-hug is uh, one of the key moves to punish for Jack. But, you know, there's a reason it's inconsistently punished in tournament play, if you notice. <laughs> Alright. So, yeah, forward, two, three, one, good string. High, high mid. Does not jail. Negative 11 on the second hit, negative 12 on the third hit. Plus 19, counter hit on the third hit. Next. Forward, plus one, plus two. Ah, good move. Good move. Very good move. So, it's plus three on block. Forces crouch both on hit and on block and on counter hit. Uh, if you guys ever seen that legendary match from, uh, what was it, SCR, I think? In the early days of Tekken 6, it was Chet Chetty. Chet Chet T, right? <laughs> Chet Chet T for the fucking devil man. Versus Mr. Naps. There was this one round where Mr. Naps just ate like four of these fucking back to back. Ooh, my, my one button got stuck on me. Ooh, that's bad. Sticky buttons now, huh? Like just back to back. Boom, boom. He sidestep. Boom. Again, boom. It was just like nasty. Really nasty shit. Uh, this is a fucking great move. What is there to say about it? You know, like plus three force crouch on block. Plus, like what is it? Plus eight. Force crash on hit and knock down on counter hit. It's just a little slow, but it's not super slow. It's not slow like Asuka's version where she like goes er and then she like falls on one leg almost and she like flails for a second. It's only 22 frames. <laughs> Let's see a doctor about them sticky buttons. I gotta replace the buttons and the fucking stick on this damn thing. The actual switches. Hammer of the gods, yes. Hammer of the Gods. Is that really what this move is called? I've heard it called that, but I don't know if that's what it's actually called. It's... <laughs> what a great name. Hammer of the Gods. It's... Uh, uh, dude. It's like his version of Brian's back one, except it doesn't launch on counter. He might get a free follow-up on counter head. I don't know, though. He just might get good okay. Right? Like, that might be a guaranteed block. Maybe. I guess you might as well test it, right? What is his the Oki after Hammer of the Gods on counter here, right? By the way, recap on Force Crowd situation. When you put the opponent in the Force Crowd situation with you being plus on block, always remember, they can only instantly sidestep in one, one direction towards the background. Now, if you're playing online, that might mean weird things. Because right now, he's on two-piece side, I'm on one-piece side. But what if they're playing online and they're saying, I'm going to be always on one-piece side. You might see this be blocked, and then they're going to instantly sidestep down, right? But if you're in a offline two-piece session, right, you know that your opponent doesn't have that option. So they will always sidestep towards the background. Up. Instantly. To size up the other way in the force cross situation. For example, I put myself in force cross. I'm tapping down. I can't size step. I'd have to cross cancel and then go down. Or it's back dash cancel or dash cancel. But if I tap up, I can instantly size step from crouching. So keep that in mind. So any moves that you're like you have that like, oh, they only chance to one side. All of a sudden you realize I'm at plus three. He can't go to the the side that this is weak against. I'll use this move here, you know, in case he sidesteps. You follow. You dig. The Thor cosplay. <laughs> All right, so counter hit. Let's, uh, I got to record it on myself. Test. Hammer of the gods, right? Test that first. That looks like a situation where if I stay down. If I do anything but stay down, that's going to hit me. Oh, no, I can hold back. I had a feeling. Okay. And I hold up. That's going to hit me. All right. It's not a big deal. I could come up with something better than that. Oof. 
So I think that's going to be a guaranteed block. Nah. Damn. That new back get up fucks things up, doesn't it? But if I do anything else, if I stay down, I'm going to get hit, right? Yep. Okay, I can side roll. Alright, so not the greatest Soki. Near the wall, though. This might be good. As a matter of fact, he might have some guaranteed shit near the wall. Let's find out. As a matter of fact, it was in Mishima Dojo that uh, Chet Chetty fought Mr. Naps in that match. <laughs> in the Tekken 6 version. Whatever, I forget what it was called, but it was basically the Mishima Dojo. Probably gonna wall splat, right? Yeah, it wall splats. So I'm gonna have to like push him. Yeah, see, I feel like that would be guaranteed, right? When you when you're like near the wall but not close enough to wall splat. Still, this is like the fact that this wall splat's on counter here makes this a uh, serious threat near the wall. 92 damage? Why did that do 92 damage? 92%, excuse me, not 92%. Um, oh my god. Why do a wall combo, right? 64 damage. <laughs> What's the shit I've been using? The old shit? Oh my god, just Death Fist. Dude. Sixty. Yeah, why do anything else? Death Fist. Christ. Oops. Whatever. You get the idea. So yeah, when they're near the wall, you get a grounded hit. Like a down two. Guaranteed. And when they're against the wall, you get a wall splat. Fantastic fucking move. I already know it doesn't track. That's, that doesn't matter, though. It's, that's not what that move's about. That move's about you sidestep with them and just stay still, motherfucker, you know? Once again, though, it's a plus three on block situation. But this time, you force crouch, right? So you know that there's a high chance they're going to come at you with an 11 frame move. So now you can start working in some 14 frame moves. Like uh, that'll exchange, right? So what's an example of a 14 frame move you you might want to use in this situation that will exchange? He has a move called back four. It's not what it's called, but you know. So if people were to come at you with a generic while standing four, 11 frame move, you get a juggle. That's his 14 frame uh, punisher, by the way. It's a high juggle starter. That's 14 frames. You don't get that in like a plus three situation if they're standing. You get what I'm saying? Whew. I mean, Death Fist has always been good, but they kind of like the way the scaling works in this game. And how I don't think clean hit death fist used to apply in jungles like it does in this game. I suspect that it, it did it before. I'm not 100%, but I don't think it did. So you got the clean hit death fist applying the jungles with the crazy scaling of this game. On top of the fact that clean hit death fist does a ton of fucking damage in this game. And then that that's what this is what you get. This is the version of Paul we got now, right? It doesn't make him overpowered. It just makes it that like, you can do easy jungles, you know? You don't have to do hard shit. Unless you're trying to really optimize, you know, every little... By the way, thanks for the follow, guys. That was Suspicious Looking Tree, which is a great name. <laughs> thanks for the follow. I'm not catching everybody because I don't have an audio notification. But I just looked over at the frame data and I saw the follow. So any, all, you, all you people that follow me so far, appreciate it greatly. Thanks for the follow. Back to the uh, lecture. So 20 frame startup, 22 damage. Great move. Easy top 10 move for Paul. A move that I haven't even been using up to this point. I forgot about it for some fucking reason. So Hammer of the Gods. Great name for the move too. Just to show you guys. No tracking on this shit. So you gotta sidestep. Huh. That's why you gotta... You get what I'm saying? Right? Right? You put a little stank on it with that sidestep. You don't even do much. Of, you need to do much of a sidestep. Dash? Oh no, you don't dash because you'll get the grab instead. It goes forward for a bit though and then do it. You just need to put like a slight sidestep. And that's enough to make it track. Just a tiny side. Did I miss any questions? 
Nope, nothing yet. You dig? You dig? Dig it! Macho Man Randy! I can't do my Macho Man impression right now. I usually have a good one, but... Because I am too hot to handle and too cold to hold. Alright, next on the list is forward plus one plus four. I don't even know what this is. Ooh, that weird auto sidestepping shoulder, right? I think this moves him a little bit to the left. This is super punishable, isn't it? Negative 14 on block. Yeah, this is kind of a whatever move. I suspect that this is one of those that if he sidesteps left and then does it, yeah, he kind of adds a little bonus sidestep, so he's a little hard to hit, right? So it's something like, uh... How did I put him at negative three? Three, two, right? So if it's like, uh... Yeah, so... Right? Something like that, maybe? Eh. I mean, I've seen Paul players use this move. Yeah. That, that was me adding a size hit to it. I don't know if it has that inherently. It might, uh... Crush. No, that's just the auto size the back spec of it. Yeah, see? But if you go mid, you're gonna hit him. Seventy-two damage on counter hit, yikes. Ah, does that work for Death Fist? Wait, I was wondering why Chet Sai says before that move. That works for every linear move, naughty senpai. What's again? I, I explain this at least once every video, just in case people only watch a specific character. Any linear move, you can add tracking by sidestepping first. Depending on how linear the move is, you might need to sidestep a little more than usual. In the case of Hammer of the Gods, you don't have to sidestep much. Also, the speed of the move matters. So like a Magic 4, even though it's pretty linear, I probably don't have to add much of a sidestep to help the track, right? Although, he does he have a sidestep 4? Okay, he doesn't. So if you have like a built-in move out of the sidestep, things get a little weird, but still. So look, I put myself at negative three, right? So I put myself at negative three. Oh, he's gonna sidestep after the first hit, so let me space it. Put myself at negative three, see so he's gonna get around. Ugh, I gotta space it. Add a little sidestep. Oh, it might be a range issue here. Okay, it's a range issue. Can I put myself at negative three with something else? Uh, Alright, negative two, right? So negative two, sidestep, right? But, I had a little sidestep with him. It's gonna hit him, see? Not only that, I can hold forward for a bit. See? Hold forward for a little bit. Bah. Holding forward, the walk forward, the animation realigns. Same thing applies to crouching. You see this going on? I'm realigning. See? I'm turning with him. So if I go... Uh, if I go into a while standing four, well, that tracks. How about while standing one? That doesn't track, right? He gets around it, right? But, oh, uh, sorry. See? I put a little step forward, it tracks. Also, just delaying in general kind of does that, I think. Okay, no, it doesn't really. It's not like Virtual Fighter. Virtual Fighter is where you want to delay your moves to beat out sidesteps. Evades, as they say. Uh, here, you have to realign yourself in second. To make linear moves track. So I guess the drawback is that you add startup by side. Yes! Good catch. I always say it. The trade-off is you're delaying your move, you open yourself up to Abare. Mash. That's why the good play it's all about timing and high it's like that's not exclusive to, to, to Tekken or 3D fighters either, right? When you think about the footsie game and the 2D fighter, that it's all timing, right? That's really all that it is. You're trying to find your opponent's rhythm, timing. That's what it is in Tekken 2, except Tekken is constant footsie. It's all about finding these openings with every fucking move, baiting the whip, right? It's not all about mixing up mids and lows, although that plays a role too. So, whew, this sounds like an electric light orchestra song. This move is kind of whatever, I don't know. It's negative 14 on block. How fast is it? It's, uh... Eight frames? It's not eight frames. Eight frames? That doesn't make sense. No, it's 21 frames. Alright, so Tekken Bot doesn't know what the fuck is going on with this move. It says eight frames. 21 frames. According to uh, RB Norway. And because it kind of auto-slices, maybe that helps the track, I guess, sort of. 
sidewalk left with me. Uh, yeah, it seems like it has some sort of tracking belt into it, I guess. Yeah, alright. Alright. I don't know. I don't know if I would use it. It's too risky. It's too risky, but it gives you some range. It gives you some range that is hard to, hard to get around. Negative 14! Probably do something better than that, right? Oof. Unfortunately, pause 14 frame move. Not the best range. So you might have to settle the shoulder or a back one too. <laughs> it's like Crash Aces, Paul. You got a 14 frame little high launcher at safe on block, but the range is trash. At least it will punish that, no problem though. But was it back three, one plus two? Hey, I'm new as fuck. As AF, as they say, to competitive Tekken. Want to start playing it and get stick, but don't know where to start. So is your quest in Dead or Alive which stick to get? Or do you just mean where to start in general? Elaborate, please. I always tell people who didn't learn fighting games in the arcade to just play on pad. It's what I do, but I'm 36, so if you're younger... I mean, whatever your preference is, is what I would recommend in all honesty. There's trade-offs, I guess. Minor trade-offs. But those trade-offs go away with time. It all feels the same in the end to people who get used to their controls, right? Both. Okay. Uh, for me, I bought one. That makes sense. If you're wondering what I'm using, I'm using the stick that JDCR uses. The I can't see my camera. Let me move some some stuff over here. Oh, no, my control phone. I am using the Itoki Omni. Mine is a little fucked up, though. I'll show this like I usually do. Uh, see if I can make it happen. Well, it's not happening as much as it usually does. That's kind of weird. Whatever. Ah, maybe the down switch decided to start working on me properly. Nah, it's still pretty sensitive. My down switch is fucked up. Usually I can make my character stay crouching without me touching a stick. But that's really me. My, I got a defective stick. Uh, so the thing about this is, you see how this is like a bat top? Instead of a ball top? As they say, I can't find. I have the ball tops lying around. This is what they call Korean style, right? The thing about this is there's no square gate. It's a circular. When I move it around in a circle, so you know that makes uh, movement feel loose. I guess that's what a lot of people. Like. And it's like it's also it's really tight. So the movement feels loose, but the stick you have to really put some effort to move it around. Uh, ball top is fine. Pad is fucking fine. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. There's a lot of really good players to use pad. There are some people that are doing good on keyboard because it's basically like a hitbox. That's fine too, bro. Whatever you're comfortable with. But what I played a stick and pad, I think I prefer stick. Then stick with stick, right? As far as where to start goes, um, there are some videos that Aris made, if somebody could link them, where he talks about concepts. And I don't want to just tell you, hey, he. I don't want to just give you a video that goes, hey, Here's every fucking mechanic, cause let me put it this way: Are you new to uh, fighting games, or have you learned 2D fighters? That's an important question. Have you like learned how to kind of play? You're not like semi-competitively. I'm not talking about pro, as they say. No fucking. No, I'm not a pro, and I kind of know what I'm doing here, right? You don't have to be a pro to know what you're doing. Do you know what you're doing? Is my question in any other fighting game? Or are you starting from complete scratch to fighting games? Oh wait, you said that, right? You said you're new as fight to fighting games? I'm sorry. Let me scroll up. You're new as fuck to competitive tech is what you said, but not fighting games. So clarify that for me. And I could better help you. Until then. Next move. I played a fair amount of Super Smash Brothers Melee. So you know the concept of spacing. Like competitive melee is uh, all about spacing. And they tend to use like, you know, a handful of moves. Like, I don't know much about competitive melee, but just watching it, I could tell. You know all about controlling space with like normals, right? Normals with yeah. attacks. That's everything about Tekken. Everything. That's your end game for Tekken. The thing about Tekken is to get to that end game takes a very long time because there's gonna be a lot of moves that you're not gonna know how to do. And it's gonna be this. You're not gonna know how to deal with that, that. There's just a lot of moves. You're gonna have to make baby steps to 
go through the mountain of bullshit at the lower level. And then when you find out how to beat a lot of these moves, not even all of them, but a lot of them, then you can start to focus more on controlling the match. Depending on what character you want. You can focus on controlling the match for mid-range or up close if you're a short-range character. But if you're Gigas, maybe from back here, control the match better. <laughs> Paul can kind of control it from here because he has that, right? So that's kind of all that, all that Tekken is about, really, you know, other than just forcing the mid-low the mid -low mix up because lows hit people standing, but you have to duck to block lows, but you cannot duck block mids. And that's the basic offensive mix-ups of Tekken. While highs tend to be, like, really good on block and really fast, generally. That's the, you know, offensive flow of Tekken. As far as where to start, start with this. Jab. Everyone in the game, if you press square on the PS4 control, X on the Xbox control, LP in the game menu, we call it one. One, two, three, four. One is left punch, two is right punch, three is left kick, four is right kick. One jab. Almost every character can start their offense with a one jab because it gives a small advantage on block. I don't know if you know what, how to read frames, but it's plus one on block. What that means is you get like what, what that means is if you do this into this over and over again, even if it's block, they cannot interrupt it. They have to move around it, duck it because it's a high. So this is the universal offensive starter jab. So you could start there. I would recommend you looking up Aris. I'm assuming you came here from Aris of the Puddle. On his YouTube, he made a video using Tekken Tag 2 a while back called, uh, he, he made a handful of videos called like uh, Learning Tekken 7, right? Like tying together moves and movement is one of them. It's, called, it's a YouTube video, it's another one where he talks about like uh, knowing the situation. These are like general con concepts when you're completely new to 3D fighters. Really good videos, if somebody could throw up the links, so I don't remember where. Uh, if you scroll down to my YouTube, I made a video called uh, Learning a while back called Learning Tekken Offense a Simple Way. That's a good way to place to start too, because almost every character, you know, like I said, every character has a jab. Almost every character has a go-to, like, every character does have a go-to mid-poke. It's just they vary in different ways. Like, Paul's one of the weirder ones because of this, this sway shit he has. And almost everybody has a go-to low poke. Paul has a few. Right? Oh, as if you. So once you get the hang of like the flow of Tekken, take it one step at a time. Whatever character you find interests you, look up some like recommended basic moves. Learn a basic juggle. Paul, right? Uh, sorry, not that. Paul, basic juggle. That's it. Easiest thing in the world. Yeah, frame data application. Uh, is that the Aris video? Yeah. Learn, learn like the con the concepts first. All right. So I'm gonna go back to Paul. Like, don't don't overwhelm yourself. Take it one step at a time. That's the that's the biggest thing I can tell you. Because a lot of people try to come into Tekken and they expect quick results and you want to learn everything at one time. It's, it's overwhelming. Just try to have fun. Pick a character you have fun with, and try to have fun with the learning process. When you when you, when you fight a person, whether it's a friend or opponent online. And they're abusing a certain thing on you. Hit up the training mode. Remember, training mode. You go, you go up to this CPU action one. You go to repeat action. Pick the character your opponent fuck you up with. Look for that move. You could go here and you could pick move list. You can record, or you go to move list. You can look through the move lists and find out, you know, where where was that move they fucked me up with. If you if you're overwhelming, you don't want to look through every single move to find that move list. What was the limb of the move? Was it a left leg kick? Was it this? I don't know, let's say I don't know what the input of this is and I fought a Paul online. Well, I see he's sticking his left foot up in the air and then he's swinging with his right fist. Let's press three, two. Oh shit. Let's say it's a sweep, right? Let's say it's this. Uh, general tech and rule, universally. Sweeps are generally gonna be either down back, if you see the arrow right now, it's pointing down to the left, or down forward, plus a kick button. Down back three. What's down back four? That's, that's just his generic version of generic low. This uppercut is fucking me up. General thumb for second. What is the uppercut? Down forward plus a punch button. Down forward two. A general rule for a pokes like this with the left hand. Down forward one. 
you'll start to notice as you learn characters in Tekken or just learn moveless, this is gonna be common. There's gonna be common things like this. General rule of thumb for a jumping attack like a hop kick, up forward, plus a kick, up forward four. Up forward, three, four. Because it's left leg. Up forward, left leg, and then four for the right leg after. You feel me? And uh, check out those links. Is there a very definitive tier list in Tekken, or could someone really take out tournaments with any character? Yes, someone could take out tournaments with just about any character. The current tier list that uh, everybody goes has been, not everybody, but most players have been going by is like me, who's like one of the best in the world from Korea, recently shared what he feels is the tournament tier list. And in the tournament tier list, there's a bottom four. They're their own tier, C tier, bottom four. Kuma Panda, because they're basically the same character. Gigas, because he can't fucking move, he's so big. And Lucky Chloe. There was a tournament yesterday called SoCal Regional in the finals. Third place was a person who uses Lucky Chloe and Eddie, and he was using Lucky Chloe in the top eight. And he almost won. He barely lost using Lucky Chloe against the top, the top two of the tournament, JDCR and, and Saint. Uh, outside of the very last match, he almost beat Saint initially in winner's side. And then in losers, he almost beat JDCR, came down to the last round using Lucky Chloe, one of the worst characters in the game, bottom five. And it's not like, uh, you know, people generally agree, because the thing about Tekken is there's so many defensive options. Sidestep, backdash, you know? Maybe not everybody has, not all sidesteps are critical, equal, of course, because Gigas can't fucking sidestep, but his backdash is shitty, right? Uh, everybody could low parry lows to get good damage. Everybody could low crush. Some characters have better low crushes than others. Everybody could duck a high and launch. Everybody has that. Everybody has armor now, which is a new thing in this. Everybody has these options. It's not like Street Fighter where not everybody has a inv invincible uh, uh, dragon punch that starts up invincible, you know? Not everybody has that. Some characters don't even don't have any sort of wake up. So that Street Fighter V, the thing everybody complains about is, oh, it's meteor grab, meteor grab, meteor when I got knocked down. And then it's frame advantage, button or grab. I can't DP through this. Button or grab, button or grab. You know, it's that. That's people don't like that. People don't like it when it's that simple. So that's why you could, if you know what you're doing and you know the moves and you know how to play, you can win with any character. So I hope I made that as uh, clear as possible. Back to Paul. Uh, I don't like my control. It can't do up. Forward moves, down back moves. I can't. That sounds like a problem with your controller. If you can't, do, <laughs> that's a big problem. Uh, I can't crouch or I'll sidestep, so I have to down forward crouch. You can only do back, up, back. Barely does up moves and jumps properly. Also, I hate the idea of using my index and middle fingers to press buttons. Then button map. Some people say button mapping is for bitches. Fuck them. There are tournament players that button map. It's 2017. Get get used to it. It's not like you're playing on an arcade machine. So button map. It's fine. Uh, no problem, dead or alive. I also hate that easy, man. Next finger is using a press buttons as well as using a D-pad. Would you say that I should be using a stick? Uh, I'd say give a stick a shot, yeah. Just keep in mind, that's an expensive commitment. So, if you're able to throw that money down on a stick, go for it. As far as why you're having trouble with diagonal inputs, I don't really know. Are you playing on a Xbox 360 control? Uh, excuse me, Xbox One control? You're trying to use the stick, the analog stick to move? That might be why. Or using that weird pad. I, I, I want to talk shit so much shit about that, but Blood Red, who's like a New York City old, old school player, he's playing Steve, and he's playing on an Xbox One controller. A, he's playing on a regular ass Xbox One controller using this fucking piece of shit pad. That's why I strongly believe it doesn't matter as long as you're used to the control. It doesn't matter what you're using as long as you're used to it. Basically, what I'm saying, it doesn't matter what you're using as long as you're used to it. If you're going to buy a stick, Slayer Hesh. Slayer Hesh? Is that your name? Slayer Hesh? If you have the money to throw it on a stick, by all means, go for it. That's a commitment, though. Play what feels good for you. Uh, what's about to ask? Uh, Romeller plays on keyboard. He sure does, and he's pretty good. Romeller's higher than the fighter. He made it up to Vanquisher, where I'm at, and he's new to second. It's crazy. Romeller's really good. 
He got really, he got good, really good really fast. All right. So I'm gonna go back to this for now. So yeah, four one plus four weird move. Next down forward one. Good. We're here. The mid V V Paul mid poke. Right. So um, down forward one one natural combo. This is like his version of Jin, regular Jin's laser scraper. When you think about it, because it's all safe on block. And it's mid high mid. That's why I said regular gym, not double gym. Down forward one one two is the full string. Negative nine on block. On counter hit the heels to get the whole thing. So it's a matter of will he finish it or won't he? Um, he can't really delay the last hit like Jin can, though, so that's what makes this different. But it is something that the opponent has to think about because if you finish it. It has a counter hit property. Now I don't know if he could pick up for a juggle. I haven't tried. Okay, if they don't tech, it picks up at like a reset. That's not a real juggle, because you, you, you see it didn't count as a combo. It's just, uh, if they don't tech for some reason, though, or get up off the floor, then you could totally juggle them. But you could tech that shit. Right? Or maybe just get them right away. I think it does that on regular hit, too. It does. It does it on regular hit. Yeah, see? So be careful. If you're gonna start going for 444, this shit, after that, be real careful. Because if they tech, you're gonna get launched. Because 444 recovers stupid slow. Let me just make 100% sure before I say that like it's true. Right? Okay, see? That's fast enough to float me. Not a punish. Okay. It, it might still be guaranteed. Because he gets up weird. Okay. This might be a free whiff. No, I get that. Alright, so it's not a free whiff, but it's not as risky as I thought. That does recover slow, but that does hit you sideways, so I feel like you might get something weird guaranteed, right? Okay, no, I'm not hitting him aside. That might be guaranteed. I don't know. Uh, that's one way to check. Yeah, that's guaranteed, I think. Because it's hitting him, not full on back turn, but side turn. And when you hit him in that weird ass side turn angle, if they turn around, they turn around side turn. It's a little weird. So if you hit him with something fast enough, it will catch him. And the shoulder is 12 frames. So. Um, yeah, don't buy cheap trash sticks, as Aris says. If you're going to go with the stick, go all in. Because what's going to happen is, if you end up liking the stick, you're going to be like, fuck, now i got to buy a new, a real stick. You can't just, like, because the trash discs come with these shitty cases that you're not going to use to put real parts in it. So, if you're going to throw down for a stick, throw down for a good one. Don't don't buy some bullshit. If anything, buy used. Buy, like, a TE used, or a TE2, rather, used. I'm sure there's plenty out there that are, that are, that are like, a hundred bucks, you know? Pretty much what Kyle just said. You have 40 bucks for nothing. All right. So down forward one one two. So the last hit does that weird knockdown where uh, on regular hit. So that's what's cool about it. And it's negative nine on block. Negative nine. You got a little bit of pushback, but I wouldn't recommend you do anything other than a backdash after that. Because if you try to move, ah, uh, that's gonna be hard to do. Um, ugh. Yeah, the spacing is a little funky, but because, especially since I have to like, you know. Yeah, that's not that's not really gonna happen. It's gonna be like up close. I have to do it from back here, make him block the last hit. So then the spacing is in your favor. But in general, you know, if he does anything with any sort of range, that's what I'm trying to do obviously. Ugh. 
You know what I'm trying to do. <laughs> Later than you think. Ah, try to death this. Point being, you can't really sidestep at negative uh, nine. I would recommend backdashing in general. You're gonna get clipped by all sorts of bullshit if you try to sidestep. Uh, where's backdash? You know, you're gonna be able to backdash pretty much everything. I'd have to record it on myself. Came out, it came out so. Oh, wait, I'm an idiot. Sorry. If you're the one doing the move and they block it, you should backdash. I'm an idiot. I'm doing it backwards here. Right? Because what's going to happen if you try to sidestep. This would be a better way to test it, right? See what I can get him with. See? Now without now that I'm not like spacing myself out, that's gonna hit him though regardless of which way you try to sidestep. See? The hop kick range won't really work out. Maybe I'll forward three four. Alright, you get the idea. But if you backdash, it's a free whiff and it's a free uh block. And you might make something with. In the case of that one. Yeah, in the, in the case of this. This is going to cover Paul, me, no matter what you do. But at the very least, you didn't sidestep so you didn't get hit. You back that so you're still able to block. That's what I'm getting at. Although you are out of range of like stuff like that. That's the thing about Dumbo, man. It has shit range. You have to get really up in pe people's faces for demolition, man. To the point where you have to usually see Paul players dash into it. They get up in your face, dash, and then do it. Or they go to go forward and do it. You know what I'm saying? To, to make you think that a uh, death fist is coming. Get the idea. Um, you guys still talking about sticks. Okay. So anyway. Down forward, 1-1-2. One, one, one more thing I want to test about it. I guess I can use the AI. No, I can't. Because it's going to fucking get hit by the second hit. So annoying. Alright, so I'll just record him doing it to me. Can I size up the last hit? Nope, okay. Oops, too early. Yeah, so you can't size up the last hit at all. The window's pretty tight if you duck the mid. That's, excuse me, duck the high, not the mid. That window is a little tight, but you definitely could get launched. You just you just will get lucky because if you get an exchange, it does that stun. So you will get juggled, basically, is what I'm saying. So it, it's a pretty it's a good string. If it was unsafe on block, then I'd say it's kind of fucking whatever. It's a great string. Great string, you know? And that's like basically what I recommend as the noob way of doing it, because then it's like you do this. It's a negative two on block, right? Down forward one by itself. Yeah. Negative two on block plus four. Without any sort of like sway canceling, right? Just like the regular way of using it, right? You're jabbing, you're jabbing. Down forward one. You can still kind of use it as a bootleg ass down forward one. And in okay, you do a down forward one one, which uh, doesn't jail, but it's only negative five. That kind of fucks up your sidestepping, but hey, whatever. And then it becomes, if they press something after that, you know, the third hit comes out, right? The pattern is usually two, and then the third one you change it up, but don't be too obvious. Um, basically, you're trying to get people to mash, to duck, you know, you know, and then eventually you go mid. So anyway, next step: down forward one, you hold back, you go right into sweat. This puts you at plus three, but it's not. It doesn't mean oh, I'm at plus three to throw out a jab. What it means is your built-in sway options will get that plus three frame advantage. So there is no actual 100% frame trap here. The fastest move from back sway is 15 frames. And there's two 15 frame moves. Back sway four, which is a fantastic move, which I'll get into in a second. 
That's 15 frames and high homing plus three. Counter hit juggle start. And then uh, back sway two, which is a pretty good move also, is a 15 frame mid. That's negative eight on block with some pushback. So both of these can be interrupted with 10, 11, and 12 frame moves, right? General rule of thumb. I talked about this in my uh, learning tech and offensive sip away uh, uh, video. No, it's okay, dead or alive. Like I said, the Q and A is welcome. That's why I put it in the title. It's fine. So anyway, general rule of thumb in second for highs and mids. If it's 11 or 10 frames, it's gonna be a high. There's like two moves maybe in the game that are not highs or special mids, I guess. That are not, which is special mids like a crouch shot that are mid, actual mids, that are faster than 10 frames. Ling Zhaoyu with the fucking knee slicer shit, and uh, Yoshimitsu with the flash, which you basically have to be, he has to be like right on top of you and you have to be attacking him for it to hit you. It has like a shitty hitbox. Unless he's in no sword stance. Then it has more range, but it's still, it's slower, but it's still faster than 10 frames. So what does that mean? That means that generally, there are some 12 frame mids, but a 12 frame mid will exchange. What is it? Exchange? Wait, 12, sorry. 12 frame mid will beat you out. There are 12 frame mids. Paul having shoulder, right? But they are a rarity. Very rare. They're either shit like a shoulder that's super unsafe. Oh, sorry. 12 frames exchanges. Maybe it's me being too slow. That's, I think that's me being too slow. It's plus three. Okay. Yeah, sorry. I had it fucked up. 12 frame exchanges, 10 or 11 interrupts. So you never have to worry about a mid beating you out. You're gonna get 12 frames exchange. That move, the high, if anything exchanges with that shit, it's probably gonna be in your favor. Maybe not so much in the case of the shoulder. Let's see, we took about the same amount of damage in the case of the shoulder. But like I said, it's mostly gonna be 12 frame pokes. And if it's a 12 frame poke, you're still gonna be able to convert that into a jungle because this is second seven. And when moves exchange, they retain counter hit properties. So this is way nastier in this game than it ever was before, and before it was already good. So that means that if I wanted to stop Paul from doing this shit, I gotta do jabs, right? Jabs, I gotta do 11 frame moves, right? Or maybe something like that, which is not really gonna stop. I gotta do highs. Or a crouch jab, but the crouch jab isn't very rewarding now, is it? Also, let me test up one thing. If I try to mash crouch jab, it's gonna hit me. Because crouch jab, instant crouch jab from standing, has uh, some frames where it's not crushing. It doesn't crush on frame one. I would have to manually duck and then crouch jab. Which delays the cross jab, doesn't it, right? And then if I delay the cross jab, that becomes a complicated situation. That mid, which is also 15 frames. That mid, I would also need to do something fast to beat it out. 12 frame exchange, because it's also 15 frames. Mind you, that mid is also safe on block. Another thing. Paul doesn't have to use the frame that just go right into it to beat out your to beat out your uh, your your jabs or your cross jabs, right? He also has a low, which will duck out of your jabs, obviously, right? That's back sway three, right? And in the case of there, if you do a one two and a counter hits you, he gets the whole string. But what I was getting at before was he could just fully commit to the sway and make your cross jab whip. Same. And when he fully commits to the sway, he could do his options later. Like that. I don't know if that was enough space, though, but let's see. See? So, basically, it's a combination of using his frame advantage and the evasiveness of the sway to get you to, like, lose out on all of your fucking buttons. Armor moves make this a little bit complicated. Although, in the case of uh, Paul here, his armor moves are high. Yeah, armor moves will make this a little a little 
A little weird, but the low will fuck up your armor move on counter hit. Oops, that was an armor move. See? And it does the trick. And you can do the third hit of the string. Easy hit, easy confirm on the counter hit, because you see the trip. So you know the third hit of string. It's got a combo for 42 damage. How do you do shredders out of this? Oh yeah, you can just do hop kick also. He could just do hop kick, you're right about that. So anyway. What I don't know here is if you do another down forward one out of it, because I usually see when you watch tournament ball players do down forward one, it's a, down, it's a sway, it's a down forward one, they sidestep cancel. I've never seen them do it like, i never seen them do it like that. Yeah, see? I had a feeling, see? My jab is beating him. Wait, sorry. Plus three. Sorry, my jab should beat him out. See, he's negative. He's negative. So I think, I don't think it's a way to frame trap down forward one to down forward one. It's definitely not. It gives you plus three. But I think if you add the sidestep, it comes out faster. I think. I suspect. See if I can do that. Right? I, that looks faster to me. I don't know. Yeah. What's a slow move I could do? Uh, 14... 20 frames? Yeah, alright. So it's not really like much of a frame trap, but the down forward one pressure, basically, it's a lot of like Paul. Paul's trying to get you to mash after blocking a down forward one. It's not like your standard down forward one poke where it's like negative one or zero. Mostly negative one on block. And then you get people to stop, and then you mix in like high crushes, low pokes, and shit. Naughty Senpai. I know, but I'm telling you that that plus three is only retained if you do a move out of the sway. It's not retained for the down forward one to down forward one. Otherwise, I wouldn't be beating it out with a down forward two. That's my point. I don't know if there's a way to cancel the sway enough to get any, like, sort of retain any of that advantage. I don't, like, like for Nina. Nina was able to do that with sidestep two. Basically, plus three only matters if you do this or, uh, this. That's the only time that the plus three matters. And then because people know about this shit, they're gonna get afraid of mashing. And he, unless it's fast, like I said, when you get when you start get the when you start to get people to jab, you deal with it accordingly. You do, uh, you do, you do that, or you know, you add a little extra delay on it. Like I said before, and that's the general idea of how to use down forward one. There might be more going on here, but that's always how I've understood it as. Now, as far as how to punish this stuff, well, obviously, sway high is, sway four is a high. Next, if you were to do that option, can you sidestep? You sure can. All right. Is that safe on bot? So I could sidestep right and then whip punch, right? Trying to down forward. Oh. That's course of forward one. Alright, whoops. Whatever. You get the idea. So sidestep that one right. The low, you can obviously low parry, but let's see if it tracks. Also, by the way, if you do the low, just do the mid every time. There's no reason not to. Because. Um, the low is, uh, negative 10 on hit. But the low mid is also negative 10. And they're gonna hesitate on that negative 10 because you could delay that 3 in the end. Basically, he only has a low or a high, so there's no, like, mix-up built into it. There's no mid versus low. By the way, the high is safe. It's negative 10, but it pushes back. You can't jab. Um, but then, if you just put this delay on that low... And on counter hit, you get a guaranteed down back too. You might have to dash. I don't know if he gets a demo, man. Yeah, 
No, he doesn't. Only the first hit. So dash down back two is guaranteed. So basically, if people try to punish the mid, they're going to get fucked up. So people tend not to punish the mid. What you're going to see a lot of is they're going to block the mid, and then they're going to duck and then stand. That's what you're going to see a lot of. So that hesitation makes it safe. And it might even make it plus. You feel me? Oh yeah, I haven't even gotten to the core circle back four juggles yet. I'll get to that in a second. Let's just talk about how to use this down forward one. It's a sway stuff. How to beat it out. And then I'll get to the kind of damage you got at core circle back four. Which I talked about in other videos. So. Does this track? It do. For the record, that um, it's not a natural combo or normal hit. So generally, it's going to be a low parry off of that. Right. I missed it. Um, and then the other one is the Hammer Fist, which I never use. It's a counter hit juggle starter, which is uh, back sway one. But I don't know why I never I don't ever really use it. I feel like it probably has a better hitbox maybe than the two. Uh, what is it? It is 21 frames on uh, block. Oh, it's zero on block. Well, that's a good reason to use it. Either way it goes, though. Once again, sidestep right. Oh, no, okay, sidestep left, too. But I would recommend if you get a sidestep, sidestep right to beat out both mids, right? Trying to see if he gets the juggle at this angle. Ugh. Brain fart. That's why I don't use this juggle so hard. If you're not used to it, at least. Like, yeah, even that part, I ain't, I ain't time it right. You gotta dash and do a demo, man. So that's why I just do Death Fist. It's like, fuck that. Anyway, so yeah, sidestep right. Damn, I didn't know that was zero on block. And then the pickup is uh, not special, right? And you go right into the. Uh... Nope. Keep it simple, stupid. Kiss. K-I-S-S. -S, 77 damage. By the way, same pickup. It's actually much easier to do that off of the, this. I'll counter it because of that knockout. Instead of like the juggle situation where you have to be like really good with the core circle forward one. It's so much easier to pick up. The damage is high, clearly see this 82 damage for a plus three arm block 15 frame high homing you can do this in neutral like really fast you can like dash up into it if you're good at doing tatsus you could totally run up and bam just like that that's why uh sometimes i do this and i throw another one right after oh if we don't fuck up my eyes did Oh yeah, so about what I just tried to do. Let me show you guys one thing real quick, right? So, one more time. 82 damage, right? So always remember this when fighting tall characters. Uh, I know this works on bears and giga ass. I don't know if it works on Jack. Oops, I don't use Kuma, fuck Kuma. Known this before. Go for it. Try. It. If you could, if you could get that to be frame perfect, more power to you.
82 damage. For that same shit, all that bullshit that I did before, I got 82 damage just by doing two of those. Because he's tall enough to get hit by it back to back. Now, I'm fucking it up because I'm being scrubby right now, but this is not hard to do. You could even delay it, I think. You'd be like, nah, not much. But because he's such a tall jackass, you could totally do that. Too. What's up, Mandonia? And it goes even further if you have a uh, super. Um, the super combo is the same on Bear Liz and everybody else. You gotta hold back during the super. 100 damage. Yeah, you were just gonna do that. <laughs> a lot less damage. What if you were just do this? Ninety-seven damage. Funny how that works, right? It's a shitload of damage for that fucking counter hit high. Ah, slay, re slay rehash. Oh, that's how you. That's re slay rehash. Slay rehash. I appreciate the compliment. Thank you. If you guys want to see my past character run throughs? I've gone through most of the, about half the cast at this point. If you scroll down, you'll see the YouTube. I just upload these streams to the YouTube, and they're all like fucking four or five hour streams. <laughs> all right. So I feel like I haven't. I went through the down forward one, and I'm going through the back sway stuff. So I could kind of like skip it when I get to the back sway stuff. So. Good. Alright. He also has Backsway 1 plus 2, which is a move I've never seen used, really. Uh, it's mid. And does launch high for good damage. What is it on block, though? Four, negative 14. I feel like this would be another high crush option, alright? Yeah, that's a high crush. So, keep that in mind. It is risky, though, because it's unsafe on block. So be real careful with that shit. But you do have that. And it is like a shoulder-looking move, so cannot be countered, right? See? No counter. Kick though could be countered, right? Oh, too early. Okay. That could be chicken. You could also throw, apparently. <laughs> Chicken. 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 Let's try it. Got to trade with jabs, so that's plus two. If you're if you're canceling it with a side step, I doubt you can retain a full plus three. Plus two is pretty good though. So apparently you could retain plus two if you're like really good at side step canceling, which I am not. I'm still see he's at negative because I'm beating it on with a 14 frame move. There we go. 
Yeah, plus two. Plus two is the best time I'm gonna get by mashing. So you don't have to size that cancel, but you can make it you can make it uh plus two. Alright. So if you mash after if you mash down forward one after, you can do it again. You're going to get two before you're too far back though, I think, or maybe three. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, you do slowly move more and more back. Alright, that's that's interesting. Alright, next on the uh Next on let's just down forward too. So Paul, this would be Paul's 15 frame launcher. Unless the opponent recovers in crouching. Because Paul has one of those safe down forward twos. Which means, I think Aris talked about this recently, or was it uploaded to his YouTube recently by NoPants? Uh, safe down forward two like this, 15 frames, typically means it will not launch duckers on normal head. You'll get this animation, which has variable frame data, depending on all sorts of bullshit. It says plus three here. I don't know if that's right. Though. Well, counter hit, it'll launch regardless. And it is always a negative nine on block. Negative eight on block. Oh, it has some tracking to his right side. Go figure. Wow, even that negative two. That's a nice bonus for Paul. Okay, not even that plus one. So if you want to add a side set to this, you only need to go to your left and you'll cover both sides. Nice. I think Paul's might be the only generic down forward two, safe down forward two that has tracking to one side. That might be a uh, Paul unique thing. Pretty good if I say so myself. Yeah. All right, but the range is obviously pretty shit. Range is not great. I mean, kind of getting the clip and arm. But this is like your general up close with Punisher. Uh, if you need to launch a Croucher, you have Hop Kick up four four. Same speed. Not much else to say. Same juggles. Man, only two more damage for adding this hard ass shit to that juggle. Two more damage than just doing that easy ass shit. It's fucking, why work for it, right? <laughs> why work for it? Alright. You guys ask anything? Just too fast. Uh, fast stuff with lots of different good options is great. Maybe they have to look down. What do you ask? Yours is not so you get better options if you just let the sway rock to beat jabs and down ones. I agree, Noise Senpai, yeah. I mean, that for one isn't completely useless. It's like I said, it's just another mind game. Just another mind game that attached to everything else. If it, if, it, if it retained the full plus three and he didn't exchange with 12 frames, then I would say it's worth it. Maybe that's what's going on if you sidestep cancel it, which I don't think so. Really? But, you know. Uh, so next we got Don Forward 3. Ah, uh, this is an interesting move. They gave this in, what, Tag 2? So Don Forward 3 by itself, plus 2. And he has Don Forward 3, 4. For, uh, this is, what, 16 frames? 21 frames. Plus 6. And he could charge the second kick. The 4. Don Forward 3, 4. And that, that, that's the stun that you can break. You see how he doubled over? It's called double over stun. Uh, and then he just falls down. You could break that. And if you don't break that, that's when you get launched. See how that's not comboing? Same thing on counter hit. But that's why that charge is there. So in case you're wondering. If you charge it, you can solve it. Anyway. Oh. No, 
Oh wait, you can't break that. That oh no, there it is. Got it. Okay. I can tell because it ain't combo. I'm at how many trouble doing it for some reason. Wow, why is this stun harder to break than usual? Wow, I can't break it. Uh, Connor has got crumples, but that one can be mashed out. I broke it one time. I can't break it again. It's weird. I don't know why. We did it that time too. I can't tell what what's. I can't tell what I'm doing to break it. I just, I'm just pressing, what? Alright, I'm just pressing back the moment I get hit. It's actually really strict. Surprised how strict it is. Oh, no, no, wait, no, it's not. Huh. Why was it not working before? Just, okay, yeah, okay, okay. There's a window. There is a window there. It's not, so, it's not as strict as I thought, but it is a little strict. You have to press back. If you were pressing, you know, if you were like ducking. Okay, you don't you don't even need to like Yeah. You just gotta move the stick to back. You don't even need to let the stick go to neutral and then press back. You just gotta just move the stick to back. Even on counter hit. Just to make sure. Pretty sure this is not breakable. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's not breakable, see? It's not a double over stun, it's a unique stun. So that th th this charge kick is the generic that's the generic double over stun. That's why I knew. Uh negative six on block if he charges it. If he doesn't charge, I think it's unsafe. Yeah, negative 10 if he doesn't charge him, which is not the worst thing in the world. Okay. Can't sidestep it. And then on counter hit, it's still double over stun if if he uh, if he doesn't charge it. It still gets double over stun on counter hit. Second hit by itself causes that hit that kind of knocks the person sideways. And it's still plus six. Yeah, so this string is just one of those... One of those things where you fuck with your opponent with the charge. I don't think it's that great, honestly, in all honesty. Um, okay, I see no real tracking on it. me some dark chocolate almonds just tried it you can hold any direction to break the sun that was weird because I was pressing up and down when it wasn't working for me I suppose it was just me being slow I guess all right so anyway um, yeah so according to RB Norway the stun when you shake out of it you get plus six plus six advantage when the opponent shakes out of it And that's really all there is to this move. There's no tracking on it. First hit is only negative nine. The reward on counter hit is kind of whatever. If it feels like a juggle, then, you know, or at least a free hit. It's kind of whatever, whatever. I mean, you can fuck up a noob that doesn't know how to break a crumple stun. 
Commissar. Double Overstun, whatever. Not a couple stun. Couple stun is the actual Commissar. Double Overstun. Alright, so next is down forward four. I think this is a counter hit tool. Yeah, well, it kind of is. Plus 30, huh? That might be guaranteed. I think that's guaranteed. Quite. See, I always wonder what that what that frame data bot. It says plus thirty. I was like, does that mean thirty frames like like Street Fighter style, like thirty frames to get up and recover? No, it don't mean shit. So there's nothing guaranteed unless you're near the wall. Your opponent's back is near the wall. Okay. Uh, unless it's on hit, this is just a uh, plus nine. But a lot of pushback. Well, not that much. Yeah, holding back got really buffed. If this were... Uh, let me tell you guys something. If this were Tekken Tag 2 and you hold back in that situation, he would float you and then do this. Or whatever Tekken Tag 2, the bound in Tekken Tag 2. To juggle. It would be like this and then this to bound you. Which used to be that into like an overhead punch. Um, so the good thing about this move is that it is only negative one. That's why it's slow. It's uh, 19 frames, so it's on the slow side. And uh, I'm pretty sure there's no tracking on it. Yeah, there's no tracking on it. But it's only negative one. So if they block this, you don't really lose much of a lose your turn, as they say. By the way, whoever, whoever that was that was asking me, that was, uh, what was it, uh, Dead or Alive, if you're still there? When you uh, think of offensive tech and uh, think of it as taking turns, more so than in a 2D fighter, right? Because uh, in tech and the frames vary a lot more than in a 2D fighter. In a 2D fighter, a lot of pokes are uh, in Street Fighter V, for example. It's the, was it, the negative two on block game, right? <laughs> um, the big stuff's negative two on block, the, on block, the jab. And the MPs and the LK, LPs and LKs, whatever. Low and medium strikes tend to be plus one, plus two, right? Street Fighter Five, uh, outside of some rare cases. So there's like, there's not really much losing turn. There's I'm gonna do this block screen, and then we're kind of neutral. In Tekken, it's about using turns, taking turns, and stealing turns. Sidestep steals the turn. I'm at, I'm at, you know, this guy blocks this. I'm at negative one. It's kind of his turn, kind of not negative one. If he were to jab, if he, if he were to block this and then jab, I cannot interrupt the jab. Uh, I could sidestep. That's an attempt to steal a turn, right? If he jabs. I could duck. That's an attempt to steal a turn if he jabs. I could, uh, Paul has that unique fucking, <laughs> when he stays crouching. I could try to backdash. That might steal a turn depending on how the spacing is. Like if he blocks like that, I don't know, he's still up close, but maybe a backdash will escape a jab. That's a way to steal a turn. I can armor. That's a way to steal a turn. But there's risks involved with each one. Varying risks. You duck, you get hit by mid, maybe it's a launcher. You sidestep, and you commit to sidestepping, so pressing a button, you'll get hit with a homing move that tracks. Unless you sidestep, it's a block, then you lower the risk. You backdash, not very risky, but a long range low, maybe something like that, will clip you if you don't duck in the end of your backdash. <laughs> if you block a while running to put Dragon All there, there are there depending on how the spacing is, the spacing varies when you block Dragon All's while running. So there are times where he ends up like this far and that like this angle where they're off axis. He can't really do much in that instance. Don't assume that Dragon All will always have you know, when he's up in your face and he gets that plus five or whatever it is, then you really can't do much. Um, although his options aren't as scary as you might think. At least his safe options. And even then, was it back 4 3? Safe on block, but mid high. Alright. So, anyway, that's pretty much down forward 4. Down 1. This used to be his like go to mid poke. This shit was so cheap in Tekken 4. It would hit grounded. And Tekken 4 had the uneven terrain. 
So if the if an opponent was on the elevated terrain, if I'm not mistaken, this is one of those moves that you would get this guaranteed on them while it slowly hits them up the terrain, up the hill. You would just down on them over and over again, guaranteed, when they're on the floor. Until you get on even terrain, and then it would stop working. They could suck. Second four was so fucked up. Uh, but now it's just, it's just kind of whatever. It's not as good as it used to be. Uh, is this 14 frames? This is 14 frames. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, I forgot. This yeah, so it still is on you know, just like down forward one is his fastest mid poke, but it's negative nine, so it's like uh, it's like fucking whatever. It's, it's shitty. I don't think it was his bad on block before. You could hold down and recover crouching. It's still negative nine though. It has it has relaxing AOP. Now it still does that. Are you sure about that? I'll have to test that. Um. So it's plus two on hits. Uh, and even if you hold down, it's still plus two. So you could opt to go into like a wild standing move by holding down. Uh, on counter hit, it is plus three. But there's more. There's more going on here. If you press uh, down one two. You go this uh, into this mid that's super unsafe on block, right? It's negative 17. It's like a Phoenix match where he pushes back. On counter hit, that's guaranteed. Um, also, on counter hit, it forces crouch. It doesn't force crouch on normal. Uh, the other option is this low. So there's a built there's a built-in mix-up mid-low, where you go mid-mid or mid into this low screen. And if the low hits them, I don't. That's not even guaranteed. That's not guaranteed either way. Yikes. Uh, if they try to press something after blocking this, the low is going to counter hit them and he'll get the, the elbow. I feel like this used to be a natural combo. The low mid. But it's not anymore. Right? I can't fuck it. Like, if the down one counter hit, I feel like the low mid was guaranteed. Uh, this is also a bootleg ass wall combo. Like the, the down one will slap them down and then the forward two is guaranteed. But as I showed earlier, it's shit damage. You might as well just death this thing out. Unless you're unsure of yourself. If you they if they if you wall carry with shit like this and then they float into the wall, then maybe you're gonna wanna run up and do that for for, for the because it's very reliable. Down one four two. Other way it goes, this is like Baby's day one mix up. This is like super newbie tech and one shit. I wouldn't recommend relying on this, even as a gimmick. It's, just, it's way too unsafe. The low is negative 31 on block, the mid is negative 17, though it does push back. But then there's one more option in regards to the mid. You can charge it. And when you charge it, it's plus 19. Now, when you see plus 19, if you come from a 2D fighter, you might assume that means I get something free. No, you don't. Actually, that's not really a 2D fighter thing. No, never mind, I take that back. Uh, point being, you don't get anything for free. This is a plus 19 that does not guard break. They can still block. Um, this is more useful near the wall, I suppose, because it does push back. But you can always, you can, if you're good at execution, out of recovery, you can do that. 4 4 2 one. Preferably the adjustment. That's such a cool buff that they gave that. But the mid mid is a natural combo on normal hit. But yeah, I don't know. I feel like this move isn't as useful as it used to be. Let's check relaxed and AOP. Let's see, hit AOP duck. I wonder. I should also test the track. While I'm at it. This might be his uh, best anti-relax and AOP stance breaking tool. Like just hit him out of the stance. That's all you gotta do. You don't have to like maximize the punish every time. It doesn't hit AOP at all. Yikes! Let's see if it hits relax. I was hoping it would at least hit AOP regularly. It doesn't hit AOP duck. Okay, that's that's a big problem. AOP, if it doesn't hit AOP duck, I wouldn't recommend it. Or like I, maybe sometimes sparingly. Relaxed. Tranquilo. Good. So you got a 14 frame mid option to hit relaxed. 
to go with your low. He has generic low. Down back four. 12 frame low. So if you see relax, like in a neutral situation, not when you block something. If you just see relax generally in a neutral situation, just don't even think about it. Bam! Get him out of it. Hit him out of it. Hit him out of it. Alright? Alright, if you want a low option, go with down back four. Don't worry about maximizing damage. Just hit him out of it. Hit him out of the fucking stance. Worry about punishing the relaxed stuff when you start blocking the relaxed stuff. For example. What is it? Oops. Does it hit? No. Yeah, for example. That's when you should worry about maximizing your punish, right? You block that, right? No. Ooh, that didn't even work. Hey, there you go. Right, whatever. Switch to AOP. I mean, AOP duck. Okay, sorry. Uh, squirrels confirmed already. AOP duck beats it, so it's a little, it's, it's risky. If then goes to AOP and then she does the stupid little duck where she's like licking her own vagina, you uh you're gonna whip. And when you whip AOP, you're gonna get the fucking double AOP palm launch or whatever it's called. So you can see that. Right? This shit right here. More bounce to the ounce, right? Hit AOP, right? Yeah. Okay, I gotta like try to time it. Yeah, there you go, see? It's the AOP duck that you gotta watch out for. So once again, down back for that bitch. Although it's nice to have a mid to go with it because AOP does have a lot of low crush options, or at least one good low crush option. I don't know about a lot. So, you got a 12 frame low. And then you can mix in this to go with it. As long as she has no AOP duck, you're good. Or you go high risk with a 15 frame low, right? Yeah. I mean, three uh, standing three is 15 frames. That's still good. That's not that slow. You're talking like that super, like it's one frame slower. That's still really good. 15 frames that'll hit stances like AOP, it's, it's fine. All right, my music ended. Let me put another playlist on. Show more. Let's put playlist number two. I don't remember what it is, but I'm gonna put it on. Now, you know what, let me put my Yakuza playlist on. Check the tracking on down forward one. I'm remembering now. I should check that, and then I'll check the tracking on down one. Ooh! All right. Oh. So at zero, you're good. At plus one, you're good. Okay. I think he's both good at that side, huh? Alright. <laughs> Negative six. Oof. Alright. It's, it's this weird variable shit. At plus one off of a jab, it's not working. At zero, it's working one of those things. Negative one, it works. Negative two, it works. A little weird. Um. <laughs> 
same thing for Don Ford 1. Why? Tekken. I wouldn't be able to tell you. Maybe Paul's sidestep is one of those weird ones where he leaves a little extra into it. So there's some bootleg tracking in there, depending on what your what range of frames we're talking about here, but it's not like reliable, super reliable tracking. Say plus three force crouch didn't work. <laughs> I I screen kill on me and I played it on hard like an idiot. I regret that decision. Especially if you, I don't know if that archive is still up. You see what I had to do for the last two boss fights. Okay. I had to lame that shit out. So anyway, next on the list is Demolition Man. One of the key Paul moves. Well, I said this earlier, it's down four, two, one plus two, right? And then if you get, if you get the uh, right rhythm, you'll see it's 40 damage. If you get the right rhythm, you'll get the blue sparks, which I'm not getting. I'm not getting it. I'm not getting it. <laughs> there we go. And you get one more damage. There's no, there's no other value. All it does is give you one more damage. It's the same on block, same properties, and everything else. Um, <clears throat> it is a 15 frame low. Now the thing about it is, if you're gonna think about using it in a situation like off of this, you know, first of all, the spacing sucks. Second of all, you have to be up close for it to trip. And it has shit range of venom. If it doesn't trip, it's not a combo. Not only is it not a combo, it's negative 17. Now in this instance, it probably won't be punished, right? But if you're near the wall and you get that trip, which happens more often than you think, especially after they tech, if you're not like really well aligned with them, you'll see it's not gonna trip them. You need clean hit to get the whole thing to combo. That's how it works. Now on counter hit, might be a different story. On counter hit, it seems to trip regardless. And it does less damage. Yeah. On counter hit, it'll trip regardless of range, but if it's not clean hit, you're gonna get less damage. That's not big. Joe goes up to And then 43 damage to the 40 damage. 44 if you do the blue spark version. That's really all there is to this. It is unsafe if they block the low. If you stop at the mid, like here. It's still a save, still launch punishable. And then if you stop at the last hit, it's still launch punishable, except maybe not in the mid range. So in general, you want to be up in people's faces, like I say. You want to like dash. And then in general, like you would say, oh, but Manny, the dash gives it away. Yeah, it does. You kind of want Demolition Man to be given away. You get what I'm saying? You want them to duck when you dash up. Because when they dash, when you dash up and they duck, that unlocks this. That unlocks, of course, this. That unlocks maybe, uh, sorry. That unlocks maybe, uh, that. That unlocks this hitting them. Whatever mid. Basically, Demolition Man gets people to duck. You just have to be ballsy. Ballsy enough to take the risk. Uh, it also comes out seamlessly from the crouch dash. If you do a crouch dash, of course, looking forward, you can do down, Demolition Man, down for right at it. So you get them to duck. You could do a full crowd head closer forward and hit the two mad late for, for death fist. You can do the same thing for demolition man. Closer forward, down for two, one plus two. So the basic, the super basic, I'm a noob, I'm playing Paul mix up, death fist, demolition man. Always remember that. Eventually you want to evolve if you're going to take the risk and you're finding players that know how to punish death fist. You want to lighten up the risk with a hop kick, which also comes out out of the crowd stash. And of course, you can just dash up and hop in. And then, like I said before, you'll get the same damage. Just doing the easy combo. 50 damage for your mid option. Either way. Damn, I can't get that shit consistently to save my life. What up, uh, name I can't see? Is that Crux? Yeah, Crux is the one that blends with my background. Yeah, what's up, Crux? <laughs> Here I was admiring Gray Fox nailing it every time. What, Demo Man? Yeah, Demo Man is easy. Just mash it now. Mash it. <laughs> you don't have to time it with the rhythm anymore. You can mash it now. Let me say that again. I said that in the beginning of the stream. You don't have to time it. You only have to time it if you want the extra one damage and just fucking run up. There you go, Sam. 
That's when you need the rhythm. Ba ba ba. Also, depending on um, if they're up pressed up against the wall, it'll combo. But if they're like a, li I'll just show this. If they're like a little bit of the way from the wall, you'll get a full wall combo. Out of it. But if they're pressed up against the wall, it will just be your wall combo. This is one of those like Kazuya's uh, help bell sweep. <laughs> Let's call that bell. Dude, you got a bell. Um, hell sweep. Where if you're around the same spacing, like right here. Oof. But if you're right here, it's still gonna combo, but you're not gonna get a wall combo after it. See? For the same damage, too. Damn. A little faster. I want to see how much damage that is. Oh, that was it right there. That was not the rescale of that fist, but 64 damage off of a low. You know, off of an unseeable 15 frame low. You want something easier? Let's see what else we can get here. There you go. 3 2 shoulder. And the shoulder gets rescaled. As you can see, the shoulder, the last hit, 60% damage. That's one of those, like, Dragon Balls back to while standing 1 plus 2, where it's like a built in low wall hit. So it'll rescale up to 60%. And then if you don't want to, like, you know, if you just want something brain dead easy that's like shitty damage, you can also do the one I told you about earlier. Oops. Oh, by the way, Death Fist, uh, well, I'll get to that later. Um, down 1, 4, 2, see? 56 damage. I was gonna say, is Death Fist, if you hit it from near the wall like this, you get a guaranteed follow up here too. 4, 4, 4 would have been, I think. Not if they hit the wall like that, they would suck. Alright, let's go back to Infinite Azure. That's Demolition, man. Let's check the tracking on it. Once this loads up. Oh shit, Nishki's theme. By the way, even in the range where Demolition Man doesn't trip, it's still launch punishable on block. Even if they block it back here. Still gonna be lost by small block on top of being shitty reward. So always get up in their face when you do that shit. If you basically, if you're fighting against someone that's just mashing every time you get in their face, you're probably not gonna get a double listen man on them. You'll get it if they tech. It's also a good tech trap because remember when when you when you time your 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 follow up, your attack on a tech trap, you could time it like a meaty in a 2D fighter, where they'll be unable to sidestep it. So that's another good situation to force a 50-50. A death fist or a hop kick with demolition, man. right? Like if I put him to tech here, I gotta let him land. See, that's a situation where he would not be able to sidestep it. Let's uh, make him sidestep to the guard, like sidewalk, right? See, he doesn't even start the sidewalk. Same thing for Hopkins. You need frames to sidestep. That's how General Oki off of a tech works in tech. There's a million ways to fucking get up, but that's how you counter techs. You take a free mix up if you're ready for it. There's no like hard counter for a tech. A tech is always a guaranteed get up that's invincible. Me too. Huh? You could just frame the second hit. Yeah, 
According to Ari, we know this is just frame input on the second hit. I don't know. Whatever. Mid hits them. By itself, you still get the third hit, and the third hit does even more damage than if the low were to hit him. Because it doesn't knock him into the air to fuck with the juggle. Basically, this is a juggle. Those the second and third hit count is a juggle. That's why the second hit is scaled to 70%, and the third hit, as you can see, is 12 damage, scaled to 50%. But in this situation where the, if the mid connects, the third hit is guaranteed, but that's not scale, this is hitting them standing like a natural combo. You get 48 damage in that instance, because this is the fucking just frame. That's when you get some actual reasonable damage out of it. Also, I think that counts as a full-on wall splat. This, like, if you would hit it like this, you would just get a straight up full wall splat and you just death fist him again for like 90 damage or some shit. Alright, um. Next is shoulder. I said this earlier 12 frame mid, power mid, as I like to say. Uh, it's one of those mids that are mid, uh, high damage and a lot of, like, lotteries? No, not a lot of Decent range. And it's just super fucking fast, but it's long punishable. You gotta be ready to launch punish in 12 frame movement, so that's like, you know, it's not the easiest thing to do unless you're really expecting it. it takes a while to get there. Uh, what was it, negative 16? Negative 16 on block. So, pretty much everyone can launch it. Right, I didn't check the tracking on uh, Demolition Man. Let me do that now. Uh, yeah, it, it, as it looks like it should, it tracks to his uh, right side. Uh, well, that's a nice bonus. Demolition Man sees a track in general. Demolition Man is a 15 frame low that tracks. There you go. The sidestepping though might fuck with the uh, trip, see? He could have blocked that, probably. Oh, he definitely could have blocked that, it's because it's like this. Uh, um, yeah, see? He could have blocked that. So, basically, if you're against Paul, sidestepping is good in general. Because when Demolition Man hits you like that, it won't. It probably won't trip you. It probably trips you only if you go towards the kick. Towards his right side. Let's see that one more time. See? You go towards it, it's going to hit you. It's trip you. So, I guess, in general, if you're worried about Demolition Man... I would sidestep to Paul's left side, your right. And then just hold back if the load hits you and doesn't trip you just in case. You should hold back your general if the load hits you just in case, right? Oh, and there's no Oki off of this, as you can see, it knocks him too far back. You can try this, but that that's risky. Uh, next we got... So yeah, shoulder we were talking about. Low sidestep. Shoulder seems good. Oop. Shoulder seems like it tracks. Alright. Oh, what the fuck? Alright. Alright, so as you can see, it tracks really good to Paul's right side, but not at all to his left. So here's the cool thing, like I said, uh, you want to sidestep to, um, it's basically, it doesn't track the way I said to step or to step before in regards to Demo Man. So you will get shoulder to whiff, Demo Man wouldn't trip you, and if you're ready, you can probably punish it. So, you know, sidestep to Paul's uh, left. I don't know if that's really truly his weak side, but on people that are just using moves like this, it totally is his weak side. Alright, uh... Down back two. This is a counter hit launcher. I think this hits grounded. Yeah, 
Yep, it's one of those flipping and grounded moves. It seems like it works at all angles. I said it earlier, I believe this is a counter hit juggle stun. And you gotta use back. I guess I'll just do this and set that to the side. 67 damage. Yep, 67 after that. So just back one, two, it's Death Fist. I'm sure it is better, but, you know, start simple. Um, it's negative 11 on block, and on regular hit, it does the backflip that it does when it's grounded. So, let's see. Yeah, negative 11. Start the tracking on this. Good on his right side. Oh, right when I say it. Looks like it's good for step, but not for walk. One of those where you're gonna want to step to your left to add some back into it. You don't need you don't need much of a side step. It looks like also probably because it's so slow that he stops in place. If he had walked, he would have kept walking around it. See, I thought so. Yep. Yeah, you have to like really commit. Yeah, super linear move. I love that shit. It's in a crazy angle like that. Alright. <clears throat> it's negative 11. <sighs> so not much for... Ooh, pushback. Oh wow, I'm holding forward and I'm, get, I'm not getting it. That's... that's okay. Wow. So I have to delay... Wow, that's a great move. Especially if they block it from range. You're definitely not going to get punished unless it's Gigas. Gigas will consistently punish this Bob, I imagine. Would. But most jabs are going to whiff. Interesting stuff. I would do this instead. Get to that. <laughs> Alright, um... PS and DM won't know the evening I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Um, uh, so I was down back two. Next is back one. Okay, so this move got changed. This used to be his bomb move. Now it's his tailspin move and it's a homing move. And this is also his 12 frame punisher. His preferred 12 frame punisher. Uh, because there's more damage in shoulder. Shoulder's 30. Back one, two. 33. Here's another thing I noticed. It does that weird, like, sideways knockdown. So we're gonna go to a wall stage. What up, J Money? I don't know what the hell you're talking about with PS and BM. Photoshop and Dungeon Master? I don't know if you gotta be a bit more specific than that. Yes, okay. So, is 
their way to pick up is the quest. I think I tested this before. Face me! So you got a demolition man at least. Like Demolition Man is the way to go here. I'm trying to like instant while standing stuff, and none of it is really working. So I don't know if there's a way to pick up for a full juggle, but Demolition Man in that situation at least gives you 61 damage. So always remember this when the wall's to your left. Especially just in general near the wall, people are gonna try to sidestep away from the wall, and this is a homing. Yeah, you can delay the second hit too. If you don't delay this natural combo, do delay it, is uh, not enough. This is on counter, maybe. No. It might give you, um, it might make it hit confirmable, uh, but you can't counter hit confirm, so it's not a big deal. Uh, it does not jail, it's safe on block, does not jail, and both hits are high, so that's how you punish it. You gotta duck the second hit. Losing steam over here. What time I got? 8:44. Is that what's screaming? Yeah, people spamming me. Shit. All right. Um, that knockdown makes me think there might be some weird ass OP. I doubt it. They want to give someone like a super strong load. <laughs> you saw that? I could probably escape if I hold back. I thought so. If I tap up. Oh, oh okay, you can still block in time. Okay. I thought so. That would have been some shit. If it was like a, a real situation where you hold back. And then you eat that in the back like that? Oh, that would be so fucked up. So if they can get away from that, they're gonna get away from dashing up. So you can dash up and stop to see if you bait something and whiff punish. Uh, negative five on block. Yeah, negative five on block, they could duck it like I said. Both hits are homing. Even if you don't delay it. And that's pretty much that move. No need to touch tracking because it's a homing move. Oh yeah, and there's a tail spin move, right? So, if you don't move it. Tail spin. So if you happen to catch somebody out the air with it, You'll get a tailspin. Be ready for it. Next on the list, we have a new move. This is a good move that I have not been using because I'm not used to all having it. Back to one. Ha! Right? Uh, where was this old back to? I think he still has it. Uh, whatever. Okay, he does. I don't know if he still has old back. This is a new move also. It's a good move. So Paul's got some really good new moves. So back to one is not natural, right? Second hit though is uh, plus, sorry, minus eight on block. First hit is plus four. But you can charge the second hit, and you can let it go early during the mid charge. It seems that you could you only get negative eight or plus eight off of full charge regardless of how long you hold it. But you can let it go early to catch people mashing. And the reason you want to do that is because regardless of how much you charge it. You get a counter hit. And 
you get a juggle starter. Five. Whoops. Seventy-three. Ooh, I just realized something about that one. Seventy-four. You never recovered this slot. I think I recovered this slot. Funny how that works, right? I removed the down forward one and I got two more damage for him. Sorry, let me uh Seventy-four. And does the same damage as that shit. Alright, back to business. So yeah. Back to one great fucking move. And there's one more usage I've seen for it. I just saw in the tournament recently, didn't I? Sparrowgen used this setup. So if you're gonna use this setup, you're probably gonna want to do a lot of a lot a lot of hits before the before a tail spin in a jungle, which would kind of give it away, I suppose. But yeah, shit like um, if you're good at that, which I'm not, you can get like two of those in a row. Maybe it's the only. Whatever, I'm just gonna do it like this then. And then you do this as you juggle, right? 70 damage. So what ends up happening is, I showed this before already, but... They don't hold back, that is guaranteed for 28 damage. So they have to hold back and block the fully charged second hit. They have to. And then when they do that, they get up and you're at plus 8 right in their face, just like this. So, this is a noob killer in that noobs probably won't be holding back. Well, actually, maybe they wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> just like without thinking about what holding back means. I feel like a lot of people, though, they don't hold back against those kinds of knockdowns. Like when you see, um, when you see that kind of bounce like that, you gotta hold back or the opponent gets something guaranteed to get up. So, you sacrifice however much damage, right? What is it? See, this is why I'm saying you gotta, you wanna, you wanna add as much damage as possible. So you're just doing that, this, on the uh, post tailspin. So if you do the usual shit, you're losing way too much damage for that setup. You know, but if you add this to it, oops, if you add the course of forward one to it, you don't suck at it. See, here I'm only sacrificing 10 damage, which is still a lot. But hey, you want wake ups, you gotta earn it. Yeah, that's pretty much all there is to this move. I don't think it tracks. It's a good string, though, overall. Go figure. Maybe it doesn't track walk. Thoughts so. Alright, yeah. So it only kind of, it kind of, it's okay at tracking step to, to your right, but I suspect that's because it's a slow move. So they have to step later. I can test that. If I did it instantly, I have the block if I just step. But if I delay my step at all, it's gonna get around it. This is one of those, it has like a beefy hitbox, and it's slow. Alright. 
Also, let me do the uh, offense. Without, without a. Uh, looks like it's a big enough delay where you could sidestep. The first hit forces crouch though, so no, you cannot sidestep. First one by itself, it's only negative five. It's not even that bad. Is it negative five force crouch? No. Yes, it is. It's negative five force crouch. First hit on counter hit doesn't do anything, but it does make a combo. That's the way it's um, like a bounce or like that. I mean, like a juggle. All right. Um, so that's pretty much it for that string. Good move. Very good move. It's one I've been neglecting, and I should use it more. So next on the list, we have his 14 frame high punisher. I said this before. Back plus three on regular hit does that stun, and you got to pick up with something to like sacrifice damage. Like, see, that's not unless it's Kuma, maybe. You can just be different, but you can't do the usual shit I've been doing, right? So here you're gonna want to use three one, back one two, demolition man, fifty eight, three two, not three one, sorry. Sixty one, and how much was it with demolition man? Fifty-nine, so just death is fucked up this man. Yeah, so three, two, back, one, two, dash up, death, clean hit death fist. Every time. You can probably get better stuff, but keep it uh, make it easier on yourself at first. It's negative uh, six. Alright, let's check the track on this thing. Zero, it did. So it seems really good uh, for his left side. It tracks reliably. So if you're gonna use it up close and you're worried about sidestep, I would go to your right. Because I'm putting myself at negative seven, that's why that's happening. In general, you're gonna want to sidestep right to align with this move. You don't even need much of a sidestep. This is tapping down instantly back three, canceling the sidestep into it. All right, that's back three. Back four. Ah, yes, slow poke. Uh, so yeah, he has some weird inputs for his low pokes, and they all look weird like this. So it's just like he's trying to trip your leg on the side like that. So this is plus three. Yet another plus three situation for Paul. So you could frame trap into a um, into a magic four. Uh, you could frame trap into a shoulder if you want to go fucking nuts. I wouldn't recommend it, but you know, it's there. Or you could just use it like to sidestep and fuck with people. Because you're at plus three, so you don't have to fucking use a, use a, a something. I would only recommend always forcing a mix up at high frame advantage. At low frame advantage, plus three, plus four, you don't have to every single time. Especially if you're fighting a good opponent. Because then you just make yourself more predictable. I don't think there's any counter hit properties on this, and I'm right. Still plus three. Uh, I believe this is grounded. Yep, regardless of the angle, and it's grounded. Kick rocks. Alright. Assess the tracking on this baby. It's slow for a poke though, it's 20 frames startup.
It looks good for his right side. It's bad for his left side. Too many negative. So it looks good for his right side, as it looks like it should, because he's kicking from the right towards his left. So like you'd be sidestepping into that kick. Next on the list, we got... Oh yeah, by the way, it's negative 13 on block, so... Depending on who you fight against, some characters will be able to launch it. Since he's standing, he's not crouching, Eddie would be able to launch this. He has a 13 frame high while standing launcher. Uh, Josie, with while standing 2-1, will get a juggle up for that on block. Kazuya, and other people who I don't remember right now. Maybe those are the only three. A cool man, Eliza, with meter. We want to punish that. Hard. So next, his armor move. Alright, uh, the startup on this is 24 frames. So it's actually faster than some of these other armor moves that like do weird shit like that. Uh, don't know, when I'm tired, I often miss the last set down, man, but I'm always going for the just frames that probably wouldn't happen if I was just mashing it out. Yeah, I would say just mash it out every time now. So anyway. Back plus one pursue. It also has like some lean back properties. Whoops, that's back back one plus two. Uh, it is a high. Uh, it's plus one. Did I see that right? It's zero on block. I didn't realize it was just good on block. Pretty decent armor move. I've been using it just as an armor, but I didn't really think about what it is on block. So it's actually pretty solid on block. It's just that's the trade off of it being a high, I guess. So if your opponent knows the matchup, they might like absorb it with a fucking mid poke or a jab and then duck, right? Like make you absorb that one hit and duck. Okay. And then you ate all of that damage. Okay, 14 frames and I could duck. 15, I lose my duck. My ducking privilege. <laughs> or well, it's really because of the recovery of the move. I don't, I don't think the speed of the move matters. <laughs> it's a high. It doesn't counter hit though because it hits it too late. did it, I fucked up. Damn, that's hard to do. Is that even possible? Back one pursuit was so funny in second three. Killed every time across the felt him our conquer. Really? I didn't know about that. <laughs> Alright, um. Damn it, I was able to go back and forward like this. <laughs> Let's 
So anyway. Pretty good armor move. Knocks down on regular hit. Next, up back two. Ah, this is the new Impa for back two. What it used to be. This is his mid homing move. By the way, there's no tracking on that armor move, I already know. <laughs> I learned that the hard way. Um, safe on block. He has uh, unique juggles on counter hit, let's say. You have to quarter circle forward with one, I think. Can you? Uh, you can still do the classic, but here you have to do the core circle forward one because of the angle. Core circle forward one, not uh, forward one. Sway four, hold back. Sway four. You can still do that if you want. <laughs> that might do some weird shit at that angle. Right, anyway, it's not gonna 9 on block. We don't gotta test the tracking because it's a homie move. So it's the same as it used to be, basically. Decent range on it, too. Okay, range. Not great. Not bad. That's a good move, though. Up back three is nice. Ah, uh, one of those defensive jump hot kicks that are launch punch long block, and he can, can he convert? Does it look like it? No conversion for you. That would wall splat, though, I imagine. Yeah, it's just a defensive jump hot kick. Nothing special. Uh, up forward two. This is that fucking move I get sometimes when I try to death this. And I put too much oomph on the stick. And I go up forward. <laughs> um, not special. I don't know if you can hold back for that. Yeah, you can, so there's no guaranteed follow up. If they don't hold back though, that would be guaranteed, I suppose. Uh, it's only got the wall with a scared opponent and jumps over fire boss. Yeah, I don't know. I guess it's wall splats. It is plus eight on block. That's the only like decent thing I like about this. Not lost punch when I fuck it up. When I fuck up that fist and I get that, it's like, oh, I'm at plus eight, whatever, dash up, demo man, whatever. No need to test the tracking on that one. We know. Super linear. Um. So up three. Ah, neutral jump three. He gets a full hot kick out of it, but it's negative 16, Chloe style. Well, I guess up four three is also down. That's the shredder. I mean, you, you might as well just hop kick, right? Same damage, too. But not a lot of fun. Neutral jump hot kick, though. Knocks back, unless you counter. <sighs> That's a forward three ground break. That looks like the kind of move that would ground break. Plus 
nine on block. I mean, that's fine if you do four forward two. They ain't going nowhere. No floor break, but... This stage starts you pushing towards the corner of the wall, not like a straight wall splash. That's actually kind of unique. I feel like they did that on purpose to fuck with you so you don't get like full wall carry from stage start, right? I like that's what they did. Floor break? What the hell floor breaks for Paul? Alright, well, whatever. Yeah, nah. I want to rely. I just rely on sidestepping to get around fireballs. Not some weird shit like that. All right, Shredders. At least one variation of Shredders. That's the other one. Up forward three four. Can also be forward four three four, but they're different moves. Up forward three four. It's only negative thirteen. But his juggles are weak out of it. Weaker than regular hot kick. See, he can't do the closer to forward one, but he could do the new juggle out of it. Thing about that is, since that second kick hits them in the air like that, that takes away your 70% scaling. So, it's kind of whatever. It is one of those though that it makes it harder to punish up forward three by itself. Because up forward three by itself is launch punishable. So you could basically get, and you could do the, um, can you do the cross circle forward out of that? You probably cannot do the cross circle forward one out of that, but you, you can't even do the down forward one out of that. You have to do the 3-1, sorry, 3-2. You have to do the 3-2 to pick up up forward three. Yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. Shredders, if you want to make yourself, like, you know, have a bootleg, a 4 d 4 a bootleg, safe, hop kick, or just hop kick regularly if you want better juggles. That's only if you're doing the hard stuff, though. A 4 d 4 negative 13, assess the tracking.
It's also worse on whip. Alright, up forward three tracks to the left side. Yeah, so up forward three. Oh, no, not much. Not really. I take that back. No tracking. I don't know why I hit him that one time. I delayed it, that's why. <laughs> I can tell I'm out of it because of that. So there's no tracking on either one. Next, we have very important move. Forward, forward, two. Yes. Forward, forward, two. So good. It's so good. So good. It got buffed in this game, too. So forward, forward, two has three follow-ups. Two of which can be canceled. The uh, three follow-ups are a high, which is a sort of just frame. The mid, which is not a just frame. The mid can be canceled. And a low, which can be, which is seeable and can be canceled. The low is full forward 2-2. Two, two. You've seen it before, right? I'm sure you have. Some law players, uh, especially scrubby ones, will try to steal around or, or win with that. In fact, it's just that low is a jungle starter. If you hold back, go for 2-2 two, two back, you recover crouching. So you get an instant while standing form or some shit. Instant while standing but the moment you recover. The other way to cancel is the mid if you hold back again. You recover standing. Now the buff is the mid combos on normal hit in this game. It didn't do that before. Before, I needed to counter him. But the mid is not safe. Negative 12. Alright. It's a great whiff punisher. And it keeps people in check, that uh, keep people that move around in check, because it's fucking really hard, really hard to sidestep this shit. Like, impossible. You have to sidestep it, like, right at the end. Also, it seems like you want to go to your left, sidestep it. For more consistency. Consistency. Why is it hard to sidestep? Well, I think it inherently has tracking to one side. But the other thing is it's a forward-forward move. And forward-forward moves can always... You can always hold the second forward a little bit to add tracking. So that's why... It, and, you know... It's not really used in a situation where it's like jab into it. It's used from like this distance. Always. Always. It's never used like, oh, and then I'm gonna go that as my mid. It's never that way. So you have to like time it well to sidestep it. So like you see here. See? You got around it. See, it inherently has some tracking to Paul's left side. So, like I said, you hold forward a little bit, all of a sudden it becomes impossible to sidestep. You have to time it super fucking well. See? Without, hold without holding it. It's also a great whiff punisher. In the case of whiff punishment, you don't you obviously don't want to delay the input. You're only delaying it in a neutral situation where it's like, this guy's moving around a lot. Let me just toss it out there, right? That's the way I use it. Because the thing is, it is unsafe. The high does not jail, so it could be ducked and launched, but it's kind of difficult because it recovers fairly quick. Fairly quick. And I'm fucking up. And you can't like sidestep it, right? I feel like they made us recover a little slower now. 
Nah, yeah, it's not as hard as it used to be. I feel like in DR, in DR, this shit was like really hard to like get a full launch on, but whatever. So you could totally uh, duck and launch him, and then the mid keeps him covered, and then on top of that, he could cancel up out of the mid to fuck with you. So it's just a really good move. But once again, like I said, Paul has to take risks. Still, if you want a way to stop people from moving around from across the screen, that's a pretty great way of doing it. And it's like really good damage. It wall splats. It wall carries. See, if you do the high version, it does that sort of knockback that if they hit the wall, they slam hard. So you can run up and do an actual wall combo. So it's a good wall carry. You want to do it off of that, right? Wow, why am I whiffing it? Oh, I'm tired. That. <laughs> you could walk at, like be in DR, second like DR, and five pointer really. A lot of characters would just jab, dash jab like that, like crazy to get you to the wall, and you didn't lose as much damage as you do now. Dash jabbing was made harder in second six. Before Paul could get like six, maybe even seven dash jabs, and just carry you, and I get this to finish you off and just leave you near the wall so it can scare you with the Demo Man and uh, Death Fist mix up. I used to see Brian Ace do that shit. He used to be really funny looking. Um, so the high is like a sort of just frame, it is negative four on block. And I think it pushes back. Yeah, pushes back, so you can actually move around after it's blocked. Assuming they don't duck, right? So the way you do the high is you need a little bit of rhythm. Pop, 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 All right. Let's see. Fuck Bob. Fuck Xiao Yu. Fuck, uh, fuck Lars. Buff Gigas, where's Marduk, Wensley, Predictable, Rhythm is what you need to get that high consistently. Alright, so next on the list, we got the forward forward version of Shredder Kicks. So the forward forward version of Shredder Kicks actually both have... Um, has uh, both. The forward forward version of Shredder Kicks, forward forward three four Shredder Kicks, has a built in follow up that makes it a little weird to punish. So forward forward three four Shredder Kicks are actually negative 16. But then if you press four again after that, you have this high. That's negative five on block. Or if you hold down four, you have this low. Oh yeah, he has a mid also. Down forward four. Forward forward four, four three, down forward four is the mid. Can you delay it? No. And it still like takes away your 70% scaling on your juggle though. So it makes it a little weird to punish it and I kind of forget the rules so I'm going to go through it right now real quick. I think the high stops jabs. No it doesn't. Alright, 12 frame exchanges. Yeah, 12 frame exchange with the highs. So it makes it into like a, a 10 and 11 frame punisher if you go high, or you could duck the high 
if you think he's gonna do it and then launch him, right? The mid fucks up his juggle, right? But the mid is negative 14. No counter hit powers on the mid. So you probably have to shoulder in the case of fall. No, if that one two reaches. That's technically if you execute perfectly a uh, 14 frame Punisher. Good luck doing that. 13 frames. <laughs> um, Fall's 14 frame won't reach. Alright, so next we got the low. Which is negative on hit, regardless of if it's a counter hit or not. And it's negative 17. So yeah, it's gimmicky shit. If I were to use a built-in follow-up, I would go mid. So how do you interrupt the mid? Shoulder. 14 frame exchange. The high knocks down, right? Uh, it's a good thing the high knocks down, because you would have changed the magic four and really fuck him up for it. So yeah, the built-in options are gimmicky, and um, they uh, they also make it so it's like you can't you can't juggle if you were to connect. So it's kind of whatever. It's kind of shitty. Next, we got four, four, four. Here we go. So this is one of those. This is the move I've been using for like certain pickups, right? Uh, like what was, what was one of the pickups? Uh, I can't remember. What was the pickup? Was it this? Yeah, shit like that. So this move has variable frame data on block. Max range plus six, which is actually more than what the what RB Norway says. Arby Noe says it gets plus 5 max. Second boss says plus 6. Up close, you get negative 1. Apparently this can be as bad, according to Arby Norway, this can be as bad as, um, as negative 4. I don't know about that. From this range, still negative 1. It's when you start getting to, to get into, like, near the tip range that it starts to get variable. Basically, he needs to block it with his lower body. Very hard thing to do. It's how you generally get in the Oki situation. Still though. There it is. Plus two. If you're good at noticing where they block it, you can probably confirm a plus situation. You recover crouching. And in our normal hit, you get a juggle. While standing 3-2. Death fist. Or while standing 3 2. Alright, it's a whatever. I don't know. Um, so, like I said, since you become a crouching, you could just mash 3 to get the while standing 3. Wow. Wow, what the hell? That's not coming out. Weird, I'm trying to dash up into a boss that. You notice the range? What do you mean you notice the range? Well, second boss is reading how much frames, I think. So it doesn't matter what about the range. It's just, oh, this is the advantage. Jesus Christ, so much work. I can't believe I hit that shit online mid-matches. <laughs> I 
not worth it. Apparently. I still love checking, even though I know it's always not worth it. So the thing about this move is, yeah, it's a mid. Yeah, it has a lot of reach. If you get Paul to whiff this shit, though, it's like Punish City. You can do whatever the fuck you want to him. It recovers incredibly slow. See? Get to his back if you want. The range might be fucking with you though. Whoa, the camera fucked with me. See, the thing is, that's probably still guaranteed because I'm, I'm getting to him in the back, so he has to turn around. Things get weird. Man, Paul's kind of stubby. Whatever. We should like that. Or you could just challenge it if you want. Like, if you have good reactions, um... Nah, I wouldn't say that's reactable. If, yeah, yeah, that's not reactable. But if you're ready, and you think it's coming, Challenge it with a button. <sighs> you never know. I did what on. If you check my YouTube, I did what on already. I'll tell you this much, you could probably press buttons if one on goes into stance, flamingo out of jabs. Unless it's flamingo, uh, right flamingo. I wouldn't recommend pressing buttons against right flamingo. Unless it's crouch jab. Alright, I'm running out of steam, so I might have to set up for the part two. This will be the last move that I talk about for part one, because we're getting into the wall standing stuff. And it's a doozy. You guys that watched old footage of this game might have remembered this move from 7.0. It's still here, obviously, but how fucked up. Remember the damage on this shit in 7.0? Right? Because you cannot roll back to escape the follow-up. See? Cannot. They nerfed the shit out of this damage, but it's still really good. Because it's safe on block, back swing low. Death Fist, right? Now you notice I got clean hit Death Fist. You actually have to time that. If you're too fast, you're not gonna get clean hit. You gotta type but the legs are falling. See? 54 damage, which is still a lot of damage. But if you time it right, you get a clean hit. 70 damage. And that's guaranteed. So there's no tracking on this, and it's like a backswing blow move, so it doesn't have a ton of range. See, they have to be coming in and hitting you with something. But it is safe on block. Without, without a pushback. Negative six, but like that's good pushback, right? So like, uh, what situations can he escape? Let's see. I could put him at like negative six. on the speed of the move. Negative five, you can't jab him. Oh, you can. You can't down forward one of them. 
Yeah, I would say negative five would be the limit, maybe negative six of when I would try to use this move. Any more negative than that, I probably wouldn't try it. Because the only thing you risk counter hits and jabs, but you don't risk like magic force. I feel like if you were to put himself at like negative eight, you'd be risking magic force. So, all right. I'm gonna upload this one to the YouTube, and I'm gonna do part two soon. I don't know if I'm gonna do it uh, tomorrow. Probably not tomorrow, but soon. And then I'm, I'm also thinking about what's the next game I'm starting to play on the side of tech, and I don't know what I'm gonna play yet. Um, I wanna do that Monster Hunter 3 ultimate thing for people that were interested in Monster Hunter, if they wanna check that out, just to fuck around with a character. But uh, my homework is probably gonna start kicking up again soon. So anyway, if you guys enjoyed that, I got about a third of the move list left, which is going to be the wall standing moves, the sidestep moves, the uh, throws, and then I'll check the throw OP and shit. I, I don't have the money to buy Hollow Knight, so I'm, I'm talking about the like, games that I have. I have uh, Nayo, which I was still in the shrink wrap. I have the last Tales game that came out, which I stopped playing at the time to play the next thing, even though I enjoyed it greatly. I just finished Nier, which is really fucking good. This has been a crazy year, dude. Zelda, Yakuza 0, Yakuza Kiwami, Nier, Persona 5, all that shit I played through this year. Well, Tekken 7. So yeah. I'll see you guys next time, whenever that may be, whether it's for Paul Part 2, which, uh, if you follow the Twitter, I think I have the Twitter link down there. Or follow the YouTube also if you want to see my older stuff with the older character run -throughs. Uh I'll probably share there. But it'll be soon. Sometime this week I'll do Paul 2, and I'm also going to be playing some other stuff. So, you know, you'll see in the email notification. I label my screens properly. So, thanks for tuning in. You guys learned some stuff. I know I did. Have a good night, y'all.